Beautiful day for football at O'Brien Field on the campus of Eastern Illinois University in Charleston. It's the Eastern Illinois Panthers ready to take on the Lions of Lindenwood University. I'm Mike Brandt along with Dave Kidwell. Glad you're with us this afternoon. Both teams members of the Ohio Valley Conference, but due to a scheduling quirk, this game does not count in the conference standings, but still a lot on the line. Eastern Illinois, two and three. They've won two straight. First time that's happened since 2017. Lindenwood, its first year at the FCS level, first year member of the OVC, off to a good start. They are three and two coming into today's game. Today's players to watch brought to you by Justin's, the official recognition company of the OVC. Lindenwood, really good on offense. Lead the OVC in total yards and passing yards. Their quarterback, Cade Brister, a strong candidate for OVC Offensive Player of the Year. Leads the league in passing yards and total offense. Coming off a great game in their win last week over Central Arkansas. He accounted for seven touchdowns, two passing, five rushing in that game. He was OVC Offensive Player of the Week for the second time. Eastern Illinois will rotate quarterbacks again. Dom Schopner won't start, but he'll play a lot. He ran last week for 134 yards, two touchdowns, threw for a third touchdown, playing just half of the time, rotating with Jonah O'Brien at QB for Eastern. Here's Dave Kidwell with today's keys to the game, presented by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Well, right now, as we say, don't stop believing. That means keep going with momentum, two in a row. Let's go for three. The more you win, the more confidence you get. And, boy, I tell you, this program really needs that because it's been tough the last few years. So let's keep that believing and keep it going. Make third down become fourth down. We've had problems stopping the third and long. We really need to clamp that down, make these teams punt, give us a chance back on offense. That's very important. Those two items are keys for Eastern Illinois. For Lindenwood, I guess, you know, who are these guys? To steal a line from uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, you know, do we know anything about them? No. New to the league, really new as they're moving up to uh, the FCS level, but boy, they've been legit so far. But their defense has given up 50 points each of the last three games, or an average anyway. They can score, but they've got to prove that they can stop people. Eastern Illinois won the toss, deferred their choice to the second half, so the Panthers will kick off wearing black jerseys with blue numbers, white pants and black helmets for Eastern Illinois, Lindenwood in white jerseys with gold numbers, black pants, white helmets trimmed in gold and black for the Lions. Stone Galloway will kick off for Eastern Illinois and back to return for Lindenwood are Spencer Red and Kobe Smith. Spencer Red, seventh in the OVC last year in the Great Lakes Conference in Division II. He was the special teams player of the year, ran back two for kickoff, two kickoffs for touchdowns last year. Here we go, Eastern Illinois and Lindenwood for the first time ever, a non-conference game today from O'Brien Field in Charleston where it's 56 degrees and sunny and just a light wind. If there is a breeze, it's at the back of the kicker Galloway on this opening kickoff. We are set to go. Eastern Illinois and Lindenwood. Galloway will kick from our right to our left. That's the south to the north here at O'Brien Field to get this game underway. Galloway on the approach. Swings the leg, drives it deep. Spencer Red will take the ball at the 2 and bring it out. He's at the 10, at the 15, slowed down there, got to the 20, and is grabbed and dropped at the 22. Nick Coates on the tackle for Eastern Illinois. So Lindenwood will start at the 22. Kate Brister leads their offense onto the field. Their leading rusher is Andrew Martin. He's fourth in the OVC. Their top receiver, Peyton Rose, leads the league in receiving yards, fourth in receptions. Kobe Smith, fifth in receptions, and the tight end Chase Lawncrete is 10th. And they've got all five starters back on the offensive line from last year, led by the left tackle who's been first team all conference twice, Blake Rogenhofer. He's a fourth year starter. First and 10 Lions, they roll to the right with Brister, raids the rush, gets to the line of scrimmage, and is stopped at the 22. Elijah with Tolbert's on the tackle for Eastern, along with Jordan Miles. He's the guy who got in the backfield and made Brister abandon the pass and run the ball. A little bit of a surprise start there. I thought for sure they're going to air it out and find out whether we can stop Brister. Second down, nine to go for the Lions at their 23. Two receivers each way. Brister, a sixth-year senior at quarterback. He's going to pass in the left flat. It's caught by Peyton Rose at the 30, and I think he's got the first down as he turned to the outside, got up to the 33-yard line. Rose out of Cumberland, Wisconsin, another sixth-year player, six foot, 193-pounder, and they are marking him, I think, just short of the first down, it looks like. 
Nope, now they're going to move the sticks. First and 10, Lindenwood at the 33. Lindenwood offense averages 33 points a game, almost 500 yards, 340 passing. They're in the top six in the country in both total yards and passing yards. First and 10, they hand off into the middle. Will No, it's a keep by Brister off a fake. He only got a yard, making the tackle Colin Bohannock and Jordan Vincent for Eastern Illinois. So Brister faked into the middle and kept it. Mark it for no gain on the play. Still at the 33, second down, 10 to go. One receiver, make it two receivers to the left, two more to the right. Brister is out of O'Fallon, Missouri, Fort Zumwalt North High School, not far from the Lindenwood campus. He's back to pass, looking to the right, now rolls out to the right, chase from behind, gets the ball away, intercepted at the 40. Panthers will have it on the takeaway. Elijah Ball with the interception for Eastern. The transfer from Purdue makes his first interception as an EIU player. Boy, that's really been one of the strengths this year, Mike, of the defense is turnovers. What's that? Uh, I think we had Thir double 13, 13 takeaways, 10 interceptions this year. Panthers came in third in the country in interceptions, and they get one early today and will start their first drive in Lindenwood territory with no score in the game. Elijah Ball with the pick, and the Panthers set up shop at the Lindenwood 37. Jonah O'Brien starts at quarterback for Eastern, the senior, rather sophomore from Kakana, Wisconsin. First down, 10 to go. O'Brien rolls to the right to pass into the flat. It's caught at the 28 by Isaiah Hill, his first play of the season, and he makes a catch for a pickup of about nine yards. Making the tackle, Jaden Patrick for Lindenwood. Ball at the 28, it'll be second down, called it, one to go. Isaiah Hill coming off a knee injury, missed the first five games, but he was second team all-conference for the Panthers a year ago. Second down, one. They're going to run a draw up the middle. It's O'Brien. Weaves to the right. Got the first down. Falls to the 23 for a pickup of five. So we've seen a pass. We've seen a quarterback run. And Eastern has got a first down and are moving the ball to the Lindenwood 23. Lindenwood defense really inexperienced. Only one of the top ten tacklers back from last year. And he's out today. Kai Ross, the starting safety. First and ten. EIU at the 23 of Lindenwood. O'Brien out of the shotgun. Now they check for the sideline. Marquenzie Pierre at running back. Cooper Willman, Anthony Menavez wide to the left. Niall Hill and Isaiah Hill wide to the right. First and 10 EIU. Here's O'Brien. Handoff Pierre over the left side. Hit to the 20 and driven back. Good tackle by Lindenwood. Making the stop for the Lions in the middle was Tyrone Griffin, a transfer from Indiana State, who's their leading tackler at six and a half a game. Pierre picked up about two. It'll be second down, eight to go. No score. Eastern Illinois trying to take advantage of an early takeaway. Their 10th interception this year. Their 13th takeaway, which leads the OVC. Second down, eight to go. Panthers. O'Brien will fake and keep up the middle. Finds room. Angles left, 15. Comes outside. Broke a tackle. Still going. Gets to the 10. He's got a first down. Well, Brian does not look like a great runner, Dave, but he makes people miss more often than you think he should. You know, again, he has some juking ability there. He twisted and turned and uh, faked out the one defender that had a pretty good shot at him. First down, 10 to go Eastern at the 11-yard line of Lindenwood. No score in the game. Cooper Willman goes wide to the right for the Panthers. Isaiah Hill, Nile Hill, wide to the left. No relation. First down, 10 to go. O'Brien sends Niall Hill in motion. The hand to Pierre up the middle, across the 10. Powers his way down to about the 6, but he fumbled the ball. Lindenwood recovers inside the 5. They're running it back up the sideline at the 10 to the 15, and Lindenwood will take over. There's a penalty flag on the return. Making the recovery was Lloyd Lockett. As the ball popped out as Pierre was going down around the 10, Lockett scooped it up back at the 3, ran it back up the sideline. We'll check the penalty, which was during the return. So... Certainly it's not going, I don't think, negate the turnover here. That's, Panthers have only turned the ball over one time in the last couple of games and had a look like they were going in for a touchdown here, but turn it over inside the 10-yard line. Well, you know, it's a good news and bad news. And of course, the bad news was the worst news. We gave the football up. The good news is we showed we can. The result of the play is a fumble recovered by Lindenwood. After the fumble, personal foul, blocking below the waist, number 11 of Lindenwood. That'll be a first down, Lindenwood. 
So Lindenwood will take the ball inside their 10-yard line as they got called for a uh, man Magruder got called for the penalty on the return and the spot the ball at the 8. That's where Lindenwood will take over first and 10. And as I said, the good news was we moved the ball and we moved it on the ground. While we talked about in the pregame that Lindenwood probably was going to really focus on stopping the run. They didn't show they could do that in that first drive. And now we've got a timeout. So we'll take the break with 11 minutes left to go in the first quarter. It's Eastern Illinois nothing and Lindenwood nothing. Back in just a moment, this is the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Our series history is brought to you by Delta Dental. Unleash your smile power with Delta Dental. Doesn't take long to talk about. These two schools have never met. Lindenwood in his first year as a member of FCS, first year in the Ohio Valley Conference. They've been around a long time. One of the, in fact, the second oldest university west of the Mississippi, but uh, first time they've ever met Eastern Illinois on the football field. Well, after the team's exchanged turnovers, Lindenwood's got it back, first and 10 at their eight yard line. No score in the first quarter. Three receivers head out to the left, one to the right for Lindenwood. First down, 10 to go. Brister out of the shotgun, looking over that Panther defense. He fakes a handoff, looks to his left. Now he's going to run, gets out to the 10. Dodged a man, got to the 13. Tackle made by Elijah with Tolbert of Eastern Illinois. Brister, six even, 222, a sixth year player out of O'Fallon, Missouri, making his 37th start for Lindenwood. Basically been a four year starter. Picked up five on that run. It's second down, five to go for the Lions. Three receivers to the left side this time. Brister back to pass. Good protection, dumps it off short to Martin, the running back, up to the 15, got to the 20. Driven out of bounds there by EIU for a first down. Colin Bohannick on the tackle. Gain of seven. Brister just knows where to go with the football, Dave. A lot of times pre-snap he figures it out, but if not, he'll figure it out after the ball snapped. You can't coach experience. It's just uh, I'm sure he has that innate ability, but you add that to the experience and shows how good he is. He rolls out to the left on first and ten. Pass to the sideline. Is caught on the far side by Rose, and he's driven out of bounds at the 30, close to another first down. Nick Coates on the tackle for Eastern. And it is a first down for Lindenwood on a pickup of 10 to Peyton Rose, his second catch already. He's in the top 10 in the league in receptions. So Lindenwood started at the 8. They've moved it to the 30, have it first and 10. They hand into the middle to Martin. Angles right, gets across the 30, up to the 36, where Nick Coates brings him down, gain of about 6 on the play. Nick Coates making the tackle, a sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky, the Panthers' number four tackler so far this year. Six down, six yard pickup though on first down, a good way to start this series for Lindenwood. They've got second and four at the 36. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. Panthers bring a lot of guys up to the line. Six men on the line on the defense for Eastern. Back to pass, Panthers only rush three. Pass to the left, incomplete. Pass intended for Martin who lined up at wide receiver. Maybe a mix up there. He went deeper on the route. Brister threw it short and it bounced into him. So here's Lindenwood with third down now for the first time today. They're at 45% conversion rate for the year on third down. Panther opponents converting 46% of the time on third down. Third and four, line to gain the 40 yard line. No score. Nine minutes to go in the first quarter at O'Brien Field in Charleston. Lindenwood at their 36, third and four. Brister back to pass. Good protection. Drifts left. Now to the right. Escapes the rush. Now he's going to throw it, and it is knocked away, incomplete. In and out of the hands of the tight end, Chase Lawncrete. Zay Gentry on the coverage for Eastern Illinois. Fourth and four. Panthers put some pressure on that time, Dave, and did a good job of covering there because Brister had a lot of time to look around. Yeah, both the uh, guys up front, they made him run around a little bit. He couldn't get set, and at the same time, the secondary did a nice job on coverage. So, yeah, I'm impressed so far. It's what we wanted to see, stop him on third down. Riley Ripper, the punter out of East Alton, Illinois, Roxana High School, a senior, averaging 41.1 per kick, third in the OVC. Cooper Willman is deep to return for Eastern. Low snap, and Ripper's got it. Kicks away, wobbly. Willman under it at the 28, fair catch. Panthers will start in their territory. No score in the game. We've got a timeout on the field. We're just about midway in the first quarter. Actually, just over nine minutes to go in the quarter. No score in the game. Back in just a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Our coach's profile is brought to you by Legends Bank. Legendary service, extraordinary people, Legends Bank. 
Eastern Illinois, coached by Chris Wilkerson, his first year, an EIU graduate, former EIU assistant coach. Picked up his first career win with the Panthers back on the 24th of September. Jed Stugert, the head coach at Lindenwood, his sixth year there, 29 and 23. 16th year as a college head coach. He's won about 70% of his games, a 52-year-old native of Greeley, Colorado. Dom Schaffner in at quarterback as the Panthers rotate, first and 10 from their 29. Schaffner will fake a pass and run. He's across the 30, slams into the linebacker core, gets up to the 34. David Whittemore on the tackle after pick up a five. Tom Schaffner is out of Cary, North Carolina. He is 6'1", 210, a fifth-year senior, transfer, played at the University of Charlotte the last couple of years. Last week, rushed for a career-high 134 yards and two touchdowns in Eastern's win over Northwestern State. Was the most rushing yards for a Panther quarterback since 2015. Second down, five to go at the 34. Handoff to Pierre, sweeping to the right, turns it up at the 35, got a first down to the 40. Broke a tackle across the 50, all the way to the 45 of Lindenwood. Panthers got to the corner that time, and then Pierre made a nice run down the far sideline for about a 20-yard gain. Yeah, tight ends have done a nice job blocking on the uh, corners both last week and here at the start of this week. It opens up that running game, spreads the field. Coach Wilkerson wanted to concentrate on running between the tackles again. We've had success there, so a little bit of balance on which way we go. Pierre out of uh, Kissimmee, Florida, transfer from Syracuse, the grad student, six-year player, 5'11", 230. First and 10 Eastern at the 44 of Lindenwood. They're going to hand to Pierre again, same play, sweeping right, turns it up across the 40, stopped right there. Got about four over to make the tackle for Lindenwood were Whittemore, looks like also Tyrone Griffin. They're both starting linebackers who transferred from Indiana State. Gain a four for Pierre to the Lindenwood 40. Second down, six to go. Cooper Willman comes wide to the left. Wide to the right, looks like Isaiah Hill on second and six. Schaffner checking with the sideline. Looks like Darius Smith in the slot to the left. Check that, Jalen Benefield's in the slot, lined up at wide receiver. They have handoff into the middle, Pierre, small hole. Got to the 38, got all of that on his own, picked up about two. The Eastern offensive line lost another starter last week. Anthony Imperio got hurt. So Terrence Shaw getting his first start at guard today. Jack Valente, who's been playing guard, moved down to offensive tackle. That's the third different position Jack has started at in the offensive line. The Panthers have had three guys who would you would think would be offensive line starters who are out for the year with injuries. Maybe four down territory here. Third and four at the Lindenwood 39. Man in motion. They hand it, fake it to him. Schaffner rolling right in trouble. And now he throws up the sideline out of bounds incomplete. Schaffner stayed with the pass as long as he could. And just before he stepped out of bounds, he sailed it to the area Smith deep up the right sideline and make that Niall Hill the intended receiver, and it just overshot him. Yeah, Hill had a step on the receiver. If that pass had been on target, we'd had six points. Panthers look like they'll go for it here. Fourth and four. Eastern two for seven on fourth down this year. Have it at the Lindenwood 38-yard line. Line to gain the 34. Niall Hill make that Isaiah Hill wide to the right. And then Menavez, Niall Hill, and Willman wide to the left. Keep your eye on Isaiah Hill, senior out of Shorewood, Illinois. He's the Panther go-to guy. Eastern running the play clock down here. And I think they're going to take the delay of game penalty and punt. Our referee is Garrett Dickerson. Delay a game. Offense, number one. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So two can play at that game. Jed Stugert says, go ahead and try to punt it from where you're at, the 38. It's fourth down and five to go. Now, what would really mess things up is if Eastern went for it here after he delay declined the penalty. That's not going to happen. The punt team comes on the field for Eastern. Trey Wilhoyt, second in the OVC, 14th in the country, punting at 43 and a half yards per punt. He's had six inside the 20 and three touchbacks. Deep man for Lindenwood, Spencer Red is all the way back at the one yard line. And as the ball is snapped, timeout taken by Lindenwood. It's called their first timeout of the half. This will be a full timeout. So we'll take the break in the first quarter, late in the quarter. It's nothing, nothing. Eastern Illinois and Lindenwood. Back to Charleston in a moment. It's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. You don't want your car to be in that type of shape. We'll point. We'll point. 
6.40 to go first quarter. Eastern Illinois nothing. Lindenwood nothing. Panthers have the ball at the 38 of Lindenwood. Fourth down, four yards to go. Punt team on the field. Trey Wilhoyt back in punt formation. The transfer from Dodge City Junior College. Waist high snap. Hits it high and short. Spencer Red's going to settle under it. Signal fair catch. Let's it bounce at the five, and it takes a high hop into the end zone for a touchback. Wilhoyt put it in a perfect spot, but didn't count on an astroturf bounce like that. Nobody was uh, tall enough to get up and bat that thing back. So Lindenwood will get the ball at the 20. That's the second week in a row where Wilhoyt has punted the ball to land inside the five and has taken kind of a, I would call a crazy hop away from the coverage guys. I'd call that a ground rule double if it was me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good, a good analogy there. So Lindenwood gets the ball with 6.31 to go in the first quarter. We've got no score. Third possession for the Lions. They have picked up three first downs so far. So is Eastern. Both teams have turned the ball over. Eastern turned it over in the red zone. Here's Brister on first and 10 at the 20, looking to pass, has good protection. Now looks to run, they grab him and they sack him on the 17. He had time and couldn't find anybody open. And then the defense closed in on him. Looks like making the sack for EIU was, I think, Crajon Lewis. Loss of about three on the play. That is the seventh sack of the year for the Eastern defense. They had four last week after having two in the first four games combined. Second down, 13 to go Lindenwood at their 17. Brister drops back, looking to the left, pressure from his right. He steps up and avoids the rush. He's going to run. He's at the 20 and dropped at the 22 by Colin Bohannick. Panthers got good pressure around the left end of the defense and forced him out of the pocket. Gain of five. Third down, down, eight to go. EIU subbing heavily on this third down play on defense. Third down, eight to go. Make it nine to go for the Lions at their 21. Two receivers to the left. Three come to the right as they empty out the backfield. Brister completing 62% of his passes. Back, blitz. He's in trouble and sacked. And he fumbled the ball. It's loose inside the 10. Who's got it? Panthers blitzed him, knocked it loose on the sack. Who's got the ball? I think Eastern's got it. Let's see. No signal from the officials. What's the call? Here comes the uh, referee. The ruling on the field, the fumble covered by Eastern Illinois. First down. All right, turnover. Panthers get back-to-back -back sacks, and they'll take over at the nine-yard line of Lindenwood off the turnover. Let's see if on the replay, Dave, we can tell who recovers it here. Ball knocked out. Looked like uh, Alexander Oyewale knocked it loose, and I still can't quite tell who's coming up with the ball. But the Panthers get their second takeaway and take over at the Lindenwood nine with 5-11 to go in the first quarter. Boy, no one blocked that edge rusher. He just had... Un unbelievable open space to get to Brister. First and goal Panthers at the nine of Lindenwood. O'Brien back at quarterbacks runs a shovel pass to Manaviz and Lindenwood was ready for that. They stopped him for no gain, making the stop for Lindenwood in the defensive line was Kobe McClendon, a freshman from St. Louis, who's their number five tackler on the year. So that's a completed pass for no gain to the tight end Manaviz. Second and goal at the nine. Second time, Eastern's had the ball inside the 10-yard line. Last time, they fumbled it. Isaiah Hill wide to the left with Niall Hill. Cooper Willman wide to the right. O'Brien on second and goal at the nine in the shotgun. Looking over the defense, sends Manavez in motor, their Willman in motion. They fake it to him and roll right. O'Brien under pressure, gets to the outside, will keep, and runs it down to the four. Lindenwood did a great job of staying at home on the bootleg. When O'Brien got out in the flat, he had a Lindenwood defender right in his face, but he was able to turn it into about a four-yard gain with a nifty move. Yeah, O'Brien gets a lot of credit there. He turned nothing into something, and uh, again, we're knocking on the door, but boy, third down. This is going to be a really important call right here, Mike. Third and goal at the four. On the year, Eastern 40% on third down. Lindenwood defense is really good on third down. Opponents only convert 30% of the time. At the four, third and goal, O'Brien back, has time, rolls to right, throws into the end zone. They're going to say down at the one. It's a completed pass at the one-yard line. It's going to be fourth and goal. 
Looks like Niall Hill made the catch at the one. Panthers are going to go for it. They line up with no huddle. Fourth and goal. They're going to run quarterback sneak. They push the pile in. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. O'Brien on the quarterback sneak. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois as they lined up in a hurry. And ran the quarterback sneak for the one-yard touchdown run. Third run for a touchdown in this last two games for EIU. Well, the sack and the fumble gave the Panthers first and goal at the nine. And on fourth and goal, the big guys up front with a little help from Manaves pushing from behind. Gets O'Brien in for the touchdown. And now the extra point attempt by Stone Galloway. Trying to put the Panthers up seven. His kick is up, and the kick is good. We'll hold it here with 3.30 to go in the first quarter. Well, the Panther defense, two takeaways, Dave. That's kind of the story so far. That's been our history the last few games, and uh, that's the best part of your defense. If you can get those turnovers, particularly get them a good field goal or good field position, which that was the case there. Four plays, nine yards on the drive, minute 41. Seven nothing, Eastern Illinois takes the lead. Panthers will be on the road next week. They'll be at Tennessee State for a two o'clock kickoff. We'll be on the radio at 1.30 next Saturday. Lindenwood will be at home next Saturday. They'll take on Murray State in a conference game. Lindenwood out of division two as we talked about. But uh, a really good Division II program. They've been in the playoffs in 19 and again in 21. Won their conference back-to-back -back years. And pretty much brought that whole offense from last year with them to this year, including the quarterback, Brewster, of course. Well, Jets Stugart's really done a nice job. He built a, a Division II power in Sioux Falls before he came here to Lindenwood. He had a couple down years, but it didn't take him long to turn him into a playoff team. And now we're going to see how successful they are at this level. All right, Galloway on the approach and the kickoff. Drives it deep over the head of Red. Actually, he's going to make a fair catch at the goal line. And Lindenwood will take over at the 25. Jeff Stuger is an interesting story. He played at Azusa Pacific in the 90s and then decided he wanted to be a country music singer. So he moved to Nashville and did pretty well. He performed under the name Jed Lance. He opened for Tim McGraw for Lone Star for the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. I mean, he had some pretty big gigs there. And uh, after a few years of that, gave that up, went back to his hometown of Greeley, Colorado as a volunteer high school football coach. And the rest, as they say, is history. Hey, if he starts losing, he's got a backup career. He can go back on the road <laughs> as a singer. Jed Lance. First and 10 from the 25 for Lindenwood. Brister back to pass. Pressure in his face. Throws into the middle. Man wide open to the 35. It's Rose up to the 40. He's got a first down. 15-yard pickup on the pass to Peyton Rose, who makes his third catch of the first quarter. First and 10 Lions at their 40-yard line. They've picked up at least one first down on all three possessions so far. Out of the shotgun. First down, 10 to go. Brister back. Going to throw to the left, short one, caught at the 45, up to the 50, close to another first down. Making the catch on the far side, trying to see who that is. Is that Jalen Bethany maybe on the catch? It is Bethany on the catch, and they move the chains. Again at 10, first and 10 for Lindenwood at midfield. 7-0, Eastern Illinois has got the lead late in the first quarter. Clock ticking with two minutes, 40 seconds to go in the quarter. Not much wind. If there is wind, Linwood's moving into it here in the first quarter. Brister fakes a handoff, rolls to his left, sets up. Under pressure, grabbed by Oyewole and sacked at the 40. Oh, he tried to throw it. Let's see what they call this. Brister got the ball away as he was being thrown down. Are they going to call that a forward fumble? Are they going to call it a in incomplete pass? It would certainly, I would think, be intentional grounding if they rule it a oh pass. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I can't believe that's not intentional grounding, and they're going to talk about it. Oh, yeah, Wale made the sack out of Murrieta, California, junior linebacker for Eastern. Officials talking about this. It's a loss of 10 if they call it a sack. Here's the call. The ruling on the field, there was no intentional grounding. There was a receiver in the area of the pass. You heard it. It'll be second down, 10 to go. So no loss on that play. Well, yeah, there was a receiver on the field, but he wasn't anywhere close. I don't know how they cannot call that one intentional grounding. Two wideouts left, two go right on second and 10 at midfield for Lindenwood. 
Brister, handoff up the middle, back up running back. Justin Williams met at the 47 and tackled there. Justin Williams, a junior from St. Louis, has less than 100 yards rushing this year, picked up three on that play. Balls at the 47 of Eastern. Third down, seven yards to go. Well, that was a heads-up play by Brister to get the ball away when he was, looked like he was going to be sacked. I think Oyewala even had wrapped up his arms, and he still was able to get the ball away. All right, three wide outs to the left on third and seven for Lindenwood. Panthers sneaking up a blitzer here, and now Lindenwood looks to the side, and we'll see if EIU drops out of this. Three receivers head left. Nick Coach snuck up to the line. Now he drops back into the secondary. Third and seven at the 47 of Eastern. Lindenwood's Brister back to pass. Rolls out to his left. He's going to run, and he is, fell forward close to the first down at the 40. Good second effort as he was being tackled. He fell forward and might have got the first down. Yep, first down, Lindenwood. Good scramble by Brister on third and long. Experienced guy knew how far he had to go to get that first down. First and 10 Lions, they keep the drive alive at the Eastern 40 yard line. That was their first third down conversion of the game. Two receivers left, two go right on first and 10. Williams still at running back. They hand it to him into the middle, finds a little seam over right guard across the 45. Got to the 44 for a gain of six. Boy, Eastern players, Dave, more than I've noticed in recent games, are really looking to strip the football when they, they go in to tackle. Yeah, you know, the idea is to bring the runner down. That's the first goal, but uh, well, if you can get those turnovers and they become a little bit greedy here. Second down, about six to go for Lindenwood. Brister back, pressure on his right. He's going to run it, gets the first down 30, 25, slides down at the 20. And two Panther defenders Brister, ran into Brister, each other Brister, as he Brister, slid down Brister, beneath Brister, them, but it'll be a first down. First and 10, Lindenwood on the 11-yard keeper by Brister, and they've got the ball now at the Panther 23-yard line. 7-0, no, Eastern's got the lead. We've got under 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Two receivers right, two go left. Here's Brister, fake handoff. They blow the play dead. Timeout, Eastern Illinois. Just before the ball was snapped, Panthers took their first timeout. We'll hold it here. We saw this last week when... Northwestern State would get going in their hurry up and move the ball downfield. Chris Wilkerson did not hesitate to take a timeout to give his defense a chance to rest and kind of reset, maybe try to kind of break the momentum of the offense. Yeah, that was a wise timeout to take at this point because you're exactly right. Lindenwood had some momentum there. Brister, uh, he has shown that he can run. We see how he scored five touchdowns last week. But again, he's very savvy, very experienced. You know, as you mentioned, six year. You know, when he threw him up there on the screen, he looked to me like he was about 35 years old. He leads the league in passing yards and total offense. He's third in the league in passing efficiency and touchdown passes, and 10th in the conference in rushing. So he's a good runner. Third in the country in total offense, eighth in the country in passing yards. First and 10, Lindenwood at the Eastern 23. We're down to 19 seconds to go in the first quarter. All right, Brister out of the shotgun with Williams on his left hip. Williams takes the handoff, running to the right, across the 20, runs over a man to the 15. He fumbled, but they say, nope, he's down. No fumble on the play. Tim Vargas shaken up for Eastern where he made the tackle. That's one of the Panthers' top defensive linemen. Varga is down. Clock is stopped with five seconds to go in the first quarter. So Williams gained about eight on the run. And the Panthers, who've had just a lot of injuries in the last few weeks, have another man out down right now. Junior defensive end Tim Varga out of Elk Grove Village, second team all-conference a year ago, and injured his leg on the play. Got him in a seated position. By Mike count today. Panthers have got three offensive linemen who would be starters who are out. Also out today Russell Dandy, a starting cornerback. Justin Thomas, their number one receiver. Mark Aitken, starting cornerback. Jalen Benefield, the number three rusher, is out. As Varga gets up and is walking off pretty slowly, but without assistance, so maybe he has a chance to come back. Kendi Young, Another running back, really they're number two and three running backs. Benefield and Young are both out today. That'll leave a lot of a lot of the load on Marquenzie Pierre. 
Okay, they're going to wind the clock, and it'll run out, and that will be the end of the first quarter. So we'll take a break. Eastern Illinois leads 7-0 at the end of the first, end of the first quarter. quarter. Back in a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Eastern Illinois leads Lindenwood 7-0 as we get set to start the second quarter. Lindenwood had 87 yards. Eastern had 74 in the first quarter. Lindenwood two turnovers. Panthers had one. Lindenwood had the ball nine minutes. Eastern had it about six minutes. Second down, two to go at the 15 of Eastern. Brister, handoff up the middle. Williams, his angles right, broke a tackle. Gets inside the 10, got the first down at the 8. Williams started in the middle, cut to the right, and picked up close to seven. Jordan Miles and uh, Tyrus Harvey on the tackle. First and goal, Lindenwood at the eight-yard line of Eastern. Lindenwood, when they get in the red zone like they are now, they score the touchdown 71% of the time. And the Panther defense has had trouble stopping people in the red zone. Opponents have scored 83% of the time on touchdowns against Eastern. First down, handoff, Williams, angles left, tripped up, gets across the five, though, to the four. Looked like uh, Terrence Simon got him around the ankles, but Williams was able to kind of stumble forward and turn it into about a three-yard gain. Gonna spot the ball at the five and make it second down goal to go. Brister, good runner down here. He scored six touchdowns. That's the most on the team. He's in the top five in the OVC and touchdown scored. Tim Varga back in the game for Eastern in the defensive line after going off with an injury late in the first quarter. Second and goal, Lions at the five-yard line. Brister has two receivers left. He hands it to Williams, trying to go to the right. Broke a tackle, and they'll run it in for the touchdown. Jordan Vinson had a shot at him at the line of scrimmage, and Williams, who's a junior out of St. Louis, broke that tackle and ran around the right end for a five-yard touchdown run, his second TD this year. So Lindenwood, after the Eastern touchdown, puts together a 75-yard drive, 10 plays, and now they've got a chance to tie the game on the extra point. Good run by Williams. Vincent had him one-on-one -on -one and just could not bring him down. Here's Logan Seibert to attempt the extra point, a sophomore out of Belleville West High School. There's the snap. Seibert's kick is up, and the kick is good. So we've got a timeout on the field early in the second quarter. It's Eastern Illinois 7 and Lindenwood 7. Back in just a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Eastern Illinois 7, Lindenwood 7, early in the second quarter. Lindenwood with the best drive of the game. 11 plays, 75 yards, took 4 minutes, 38 seconds to get that touchdown. Their offensive line coached by a real veteran, Denver Johnson, former head coach at Murray State for 3 years, at Illinois State for 10, at Missouri Southern for 4. He's been to O'Brien Field a lot in the past with Murray and with ISU. And now the offensive line coach at Lindenwood got a really good group. They've got all five starters back from a year ago in the offensive line. Lindenwood will kick off for the first time. Logan Seibert, honorable mention all-conference last year in the Great Lakes uh, Conference. Panthers' primary kickoff return man is normally Mark Aitken, but he's out with an injury. Here's Seibert on the approach. Sends a kick high to the far side. Looks like Ira Armstead will take it at the goal line. He's up to the 10, to the 15, across the 20, 25, 30. Runs over a man at the 35, but goes across the 40, all the way to the 42. First career return for Ira Armstead, the transfer from Virginia, who came to Eastern as a quarterback. And now he's playing defense and kickoff returns. And he looked really good on that return, Dave. Boy, you, you know, the, the kick return team did a great job of just sealing off that side of the field. So he had some open room to run. But there at the end, he just barreled over somebody. So he got those last few yards on his own uh, uh, skills. First and 10 Eastern. Dom Schopner back in the game at quarterback as the Panthers continue to rotate. Start this drive at their 43. Schopner moves Cooper Willman in motion. They hand off. No, it's a fake. Schaffner still got it. He's going to run. Tackled at the line. Good job by Lindenwood not to bite on the fake. They stayed at home and stopped Schaffner for no gain. David Whittemore on the tackle for Lindenwood. Well, Lindenwood's got guys in the right place a lot. They're not getting faked out like uh, Northwestern State was a lot of times last week, particularly in the first half. Obviously, they've watched a lot of film here the last two weeks. Chris Wilkerson said they're the best coach team Eastern's played this year. 
Second down, 10, handoff to Pierre, sweeping to the right, cuts inside of the 45, taken down at the 46. Tackle for Lindenwood made by Devin Edwards, a sophomore linebacker. Pickup of about three on that run by Pierre. Pierre may have a lot of carries today with both Jalen Benefield and Kendi Young out with injuries. The next running back for the Panthers is most likely a freshman, MJ Flowers, who hasn't played yet this year. Third and seven for Eastern at their 46, line to gain the Lindenwood 47. Seven, seven tie, early second quarter. Schaffner's got five wideouts on the play on third and seven. There goes Ben, or rather Pierre in motion. Schaffner back, throwing to the right sideline, caught but short of the first down. Darius Smith made the catch, there's a penalty flag. Smith made the catch at the 49 of Lindenwood, but he's two yards short of the first down. The penalty's against Eastern. They're talking to uh, the Lindenwood sideline. So Smith did not get deep enough on that out route to get to the sticks where it would have been a first down. It's going to be fourth and two if they don't accept the penalty. Here's the uh, call. An eligible player downfield, number 62. That penalty is declined, fourth down. So the play stands, gain of about five yards on the pass play. Balls at the 49 of Lindenwood. Fourth down, about two to go, and the punt team comes on the field for Eastern. Trey will hoyt in the punt. He had a 38-yard punt that bounced into the end zone his first time. There's a little bit of a crosswind that uh, is going to challenge his distance on this one. Let's hope he can get some hang time. Spencer Red is deep. Good return man. Leads the OVC at five yards per return. Fourth down, about two and a half to go. Low snap. Will Hoyt's going to run it. It's a fake at the 50, but wait, they blow it dead. He was going to run for the first down, it looked like. Delay a game. Offense, five-yard penalty remains fourth down. Didn't get the snap away in time. Chris Wilkerson is complaining to the officials. Five-yard penalty if Lindenwood accepts it. Well, they'll have to accept it, I think. They move Eastern back to their 46. So it's fourth and six. Gives Will Hoyt a little more room to work with. Probably doesn't need that room to work with going this direction. Here's the snap. It's a good one. Will Hoyt gets a kick away. High spiral. Red backs up. Fair catch. Takes it at the 11-yard line. That is exactly what I wanted. We we're talking about get great hang time, get that uh, kick coverage team down there to get all around the receiver, which they did. So we certainly can't be critical of field position. They're buried pretty far back. Timeout on the field. We'll take a break. 7-7 early in the second quarter. It's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Forty-one yard punt by Trey Wilhoyt. Lindenwood will start at their eleven yard line. Seven to seven, Eastern Illinois and Lindenwood early in the second quarter. One receiver goes left, two go to the right. Kobe Smith splits out to the left. He's a transfer from San Diego State. He played a lot there. Handoff up the middle. And this is Andrew Martin on the carry. Powered forward to about the 14 yard line for a gain of three. Martin comes in fourth in the OVC in rushing at 74 yards per game. Last week in their big win at Central Arkansas, he had a career-high 16 carries and 138 rushing. Second and seven for the Lions at their 14. Three receivers go left, one right. Brister back to pass, in trouble, broke a tackle, moves left, throws to the sideline, caught by the tight end Lawncrete. Taken out of bounds at the 21. Trey Shaw on the coverage for Eastern. I think he's got a first down at the 22. Good job by Brisker, or Brisker to find the uh, secondary receiver there after he was forced out of the pocket. Picked up eight, first and 10, Lindenwood at the 22. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Rose goes wide to the right. Couple of slot receivers inside him that way on first and 10. Quick pass, wide receiver screen. Caught at the 20 by Smith. Takes it outside, 25, pushed out near the 30. We'll see where they're going to spot this. Going to put him all the way up to the 32. That's a gain of 10 to Kobe Smith, a fifth-year senior from Compton, California. And he picked up enough for the first down. First and 10, Lindenwood at their 32. So three plays. They've already picked up 20 yards on this drive. Two receivers right, two go left. Lions first and 10 at their 32. Brisker, handoff, Martin, good hole up the middle, 35, 40, whoo, got rocked there and driven back. 
hard tackle by Elijah Ball of Eastern. Ball's already got an interception in this game, and that time he hit Martin in the open field and drove him back. Gain of nine, though. It'll be second and one. Three receivers come left, one to the right. Brisker in the shotgun on second down one. Hand off Martin, hit at the line. Fights forward and may I got the first down. We'll see where they spot this. Looks like Tolbert hit him. Bohannik is there. No gain on the play at the 41. Oh, it's going to be third and one for Lindenwood. They're two for four on third down today. Tim Varga, who was injured late in the first quarter, back in playing regular snaps right now on the Panther defense. Third and one. Lindenwood in the shotgun at their 41-yard line. Yeah, you looking like they won a blitz. Now Lindenwood turns to check the play on the sideline. Well, Hannock moved up into a position to blitz. Now he drops back at linebacker. Third and one. Brisker back, and we've got a whistle and an Eastern Illinois timeout before the ball is snapped. This will be a full timeout. We'll take the break early in the second quarter. Lindenwood 7, Eastern Illinois 7. Back in a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. The Eastern Illinois 7, Lindenwood 7, late in the first quarter. Lindenwood's got the ball at their 41-yard line, third down and one to go. Oh, our radio station's a station break. We'll try to get to that after this next play. Big play here for Lindenwood. They're going to send Peyton Rose wide to the right. They've got Kobe Smith wide to the left. Running back to the right of Brister is Andrew Martin on third down and a yard at the 41. They're going to hand to Martin, heading to the left, got the first down across the 45, upended at the 50. Nine-yard pickup. Tackle made for EIU by Tyrus Harvey. First down, Lindenwood. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Panther Sports Network. Lindenwood in Eastern Territory for the second time. First and 10 at the Panther 49. And they're going to fake hand it to Martins. Coming around the right, finds a hole at the 40. 35 all the way to the 32. Elijah with Tolbert on the tackle. Martin lined up at wide receiver, went in motion, took a handoff as he passed the quarterback and gained 17 yards around the left end. First and 10, Lindenwood spot the ball at the Eastern 33-yard line. Lions are mixing the run and the pass here really well and moving the football. Rose to the left, Smith to the right. Double tight end set now for Lindenwood on first down. Hand off Martin, met at the line, broke that tackle, but not the next, and is brought down around the 32. Varga grabbed him, tried to kind of pull the ball away. Martin spun away from him and got a yard out of it. Second down, nine to go Lindenwood. They are right at the edge of the field goal range for their kicker, Logan Seibert, who's a good kicker. He's only missed once this year. Eastern seven, Lindenwood seven. Eight minutes to go in the first half. Second down nine for the Lions at the Panther 32-yard line. Brisker, handoff up the middle. Justin Williams pulled down by Varga that time. Varga missed the tackle on the previous play. Not this one. Stopped Williams for a gain of two. Third down and seven for Lindenwood. Varga comes in fifth on the Panther team in tackles. The junior from Elk Grove Village. Ball at the Eastern 31. Third down, seven yards to go, Lindenwood. Williams at running back. Brisker, back to pass, has some time, drifts left, now throws into the middle, intercepted. Bohannik at the 40. Bohannik runs it upfield and is tackled at the 41, and the Panthers have their third takeaway. Eastern put a little pressure on Brisker, Dave, just before he let it go. I don't know if they got to him or not, but the pass wobbled a little bit, and Bohannik picked it off. It didn't look like they got to him. I think maybe he heard uh, some feet coming up behind him. We're going to take a look at it here. Hard to tell, but... He threw it behind the intended receiver, Kobe Smith, and Bohanna gets his second interception of the year. Yeah, I think he was just a little bit of a hurry to get rid of that before he got hit. And uh, Bohanna, boy, great, great uh, catch and return on that play. Panthers take over at their 40 with 7.19 to go in the first half. We're still tied up 7-7. to That's three takeaways today for the Eastern defense. 
O'Brien back at quarterback. Handoff, no, a fake handoff. Pass caught by Niall Hill at the 45. Gets to the 50 where he's close to a first down. Well, Niall Hill needs to have a big day on homecoming weekend because he's the homecoming king at Eastern Illinois this year. Life doesn't get much better for that young man, does it? Picked up eight on that play. Make it a nine-yard gain to the 49. Second down, one to go. O'Brien out of Kakana, Wisconsin. Sophomore quarterback, going to fake it and going to run up the middle across the 50. Got a first down to the Lindenwood 45. Fake the wide receiver screen, and then O'Brien kept it on, I guess what you would call a quarterback draw, and picked up six on a first down. So EIU trying to take advantage of a takeaway. That's how they got their touchdown was a strip sack on a fumble by Lindenwood inside the 20. Panthers punched it in for a touchdown. And now after an interception, they take over near midfield and have it first and 10 at the Lindenwood 45. Here's O'Brien with Pierre lined up on his right hip. He's back to pass. O'Brien looking, now has to scramble. Going to run up the middle, not much room. He broke a tackle, though, and got to the 44. Picked up a yard on the play. O'Brien looked downfield for as long as he could and then was able to escape the pocket and made kind of a winding run for one yard. I think right now the game calls for O'Brien to be in there. We need to mix it up a little bit better, and he gives certainly a better option at passing the ball than Schaffner does. O'Brien's completed 72% of his passes this year, six touchdowns, six interceptions. He's four for four today passing, but only 21 yards. Second down, nine to go. O'Brien's going to throw a wide receiver screen out to Cooper. Wilman as a double pass. Wilman throwing deep, got Isaiah Hill at the 20, broke a tackle to the 18. It was a lateral to Cooper Willman, who was a high school quarterback at Sterling. He got it out to Hill for a nice game. Mayan Magruder may have saved a touchdown for Lindenwood. Yeah, I'd like to see that one again because that ball was just floating, and I wasn't sure that he was going to get there, but uh, Hill waited for it. First and 10 at the 19. Fake handoff. O'Brien back, rolling right, and just throws it away out of bounds incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 coming up. It'll be second and 10. Well, Cooper Willman with his first pass completion of his career. But then an incomplete pass after that, so it's second down and 10 for Eastern at the 19-yard line of Lindenwood. 7-7 seven, seven tie. We've got five and a half minutes to go in the first half. Willman wide to the right with Niall Hill. Isaiah Hill wide to the left. Single coverage on him at the top of the formation. O'Brien at quarterback with Pierre at running back. Pierre's gone all the way at running back with the two backups, Jalen Benefield, Kendi Young, both out today with injuries. And now Eastern is going to take a timeout as the play clock was about to expire. Yeah, they're pretty unhappy. Eastern Illinois called their final timeout of the half. Full timeout. We'll take a break late in the first half. 7-7 tie between Eastern and Lindenwood. Back in a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Eastern Illinois 7, Lindenwood 7, late in the first half. Panthers now out of timeouts. Second down, 10 to go with the 19 of Lindenwood. Eastern has got a pistol set in the backfield and then a couple of sidecar running backs. So they have got three running backs surrounding the quarterback in the shotgun on second and 10. They snap it. They hand it. No, it's a fake. Oh, back to pass. O'Brien throwing to Manavis incomplete. It was a low throw at the three-yard line. He couldn't reach down and bring it in. Pretty well covered. O'Brien tried to use some touch to get it in there and didn't lead him quite enough. So it's going to be third down and 10 to go. Panthers are 0 for 3, converting third down today. You move the ball a little bit against Lindenwood Day, but they are rarely out of position by very far. They're really very sound defensively, even though they've given up some points and yards. Yeah, they had two uh, players right there on that coverage, so that would have been pretty... Uh Pretty almost a perfect play to complete it. All right, third and 10 at the 19 for Eastern. O'Brien drops back, has a little time. Pass over the middle is complete to Pierre at the 14. He's short of the first down. O'Brien checked it down to the running back, Marquenzie Pierre, for a gain of five. It's going to be fourth and five. Here comes the field goal team on for Eastern. Stone Galloway is six out of six this year on field goals. 19 for 26 in his career for 73%. This is going to be a 31-yard attempt. The punter, Will Hoyt, is the holder. 
Jack Valente to snap it, trying to break a 7-7 tie. There's a low snap. They get it down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. We'll hold it here as Stone Galloway makes his 11th field goal in a row going back to last year. That's number 20 in his career. That's ninth most in EIU history. Needs one more to move into a tie for eighth on the all-time field goal list. So 444 to go in the first half. It's now 10 to 7. Eastern Illinois, the Colin Bohannik interception set up that drive by the Panthers. And it went 46, 46 yards in eight plays, used up two and a half minutes. Well, you've got kind of got to have a scorecard to keep track of Ohio Valley Conference football changes or chit-chit changes uh, with people coming and going. Jacksonville State, Eastern Kentucky, both left the league at the end of last year. And then Austin P left uh, at the end going into this year. Lindenwood, a new member, so three have left, one back. And now Murray State will be going next year. At the end of this season, Murray State will be out in football. And well, it remains to be seen if the OVC adds another football playing member. They've also added a couple of basketball playing members, Little Rock and Southern Indiana. So it's like all the other leagues in college athletics, people coming and going all the time, it seems like. All right, Stone Galloway to kick off. Lindenwood's got all, well, they got two timeouts remaining. Plenty of time, four and a, almost five minutes. Here's Galloway's kickoff. Fair catch signaled and made at the three yard line by Spencer Red. So Lindenwood will take over at the 25 on the fair catch. 10 7, Eastern's got the lead. Lindenwood has outgained the Panthers so far, 160 to 128. But Lindenwood's got three turnovers, and Eastern's only got one. And Panthers have got all 10 of their points off of turnovers, once on a short field and then once when they had to drive it about 40 yards. So Cade Brister brings the Lindenwood offense back onto the field. Brister 7 of 12 for 70 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions in the first half. He's going to hand it to Justin Williams, trying to get around the right end. He does to the 25 and is driven out of bounds at the 29. Four-yard run, Jordan Vincent on the tackle for Eastern. Vincent's got the most solo tackles on the Panther team with 23. Williams on the run got to the 29. It'll be second down, six to go for Lindenwood. One receiver to the right, three go to the left. Brister will again hand to Williams into the middle. Small hole wedges forward to the 32-yard line. Picked up three. Williams out of Christian Brother College High School in St. Louis, CBC. He's a junior playing his fourth game this year. Third down, three yards to go for Lindenwood at their 32. Clock's ticking with 3.55 to go in the first half. Eastern leads the game 10-7. No timeouts left for the Panthers. Two timeouts left for Lindenwood. Smith wide right. Looks like Red and Rose wide left. Third down, back to pass Brister over the middle. Caught by Kobe Smith. First down up to the 40. Ankle tackle made by Nick Coates of Eastern. But Kobe Smith on a short crossing route. Picked up eight and a first down for Lindenwood. They'll line up in a hurry to snap the ball on first and 10 at their 40-yard line. Now they slow it down just a bit. Two receivers to the right. Peyton Rose wide to the left on first and ten. Going to half ache it. Brister on a run to the left. Met at the line and stopped for no gain. No. Panther linebackers did a nice job flowing to the ball. Bohannon got there. Tolbert was there. And Joel Barrows on the tackle for Eastern. No gain for Brister. Tackled at the 40. It'll be second down and ten. Two receivers each way for Lindenwood. Brister in the shotgun. He'd been in that pretty much the entire game. Has Williams at running back on his left hip. They hand to Williams. Angles to the right across the 45. Still works up to near the 50 for a for close to a first down. I think they're going to give him the first down. Terrence Simon, a junior from Inglewood, California, on the tackle. Ten-yard run, though. Looks like Brister just counted heads in the box and went with the run play when he saw that Lindenwood had good numbers in the line. Yeah, as you've said before, they've really done a nice job of mixing it up. I'm, I'm impressed. Fortunately, they haven't put points on the board, but they've moved the football. First first and 10, Lindenwood at midfield. 10-7, Eastern Illinois leads it. Brister back, rolling out to the left, going to the left sideline, caught by Rose. And where are they going to mark him out of bounds at? The 42. Coates on the coverage. Eight-yard pickup to Peyton Rose on his fourth catch. Second down two coming up for Lindenwood. Peyton Rose has now got 162 career catches. 
This is his 41st game. He's been first team all conference twice for them in their Division II era. Averaging 19 yards a catch. Seventh in the country in yards per game, 107 yards receiving a game. Second and one, Lindenwood at the Panther 41. Brister, fake handoff, he keeps it to the left, gets the first down at the 40, tackled at the 35. Making the stop for Eastern was Braylon Willis, a junior from Lafayette, Louisiana. He came from the backside to catch Brister. First and 10, Lindenwood, though Brister picked up six to the Panther 36. So Lindenwood moving the ball, hoping to take the lead before halftime. They've got all three timeouts, clock running, minute 37 to go first half. First and 10, Lindenwood. Fake handoff, Brister passed to the right flat, caught and hit hard and stopped right there was Dupree. Check it, Jalen Bethany on the catch at the 30 yard line. So quick pass in the right flat, Bethany caught it, then Eastern closed quickly on him, stopped him, but it's still a gain of six. Second down, four to go, clock still moving, down to a minute 12 to go in the half. Second and four, Lindenwood at the Panther 30. Brister back to pass, going to throw it over the middle. Caught by Martin at the 30. Got to the 26, close to a first down. Tolbert on the tackle. I think it'll be enough. First and 10, Lindenwood on the little check down pass to Martin. A four-yard pickup to the 26 of Eastern. They'll start the clock, and now Lindenwood will take timeout. We'll hold it here. One timeout to go for Lindenwood. There's exactly one minute to go in the first half. Slowly but surely, they move the football down the field one way or the other. A little dink passes, something out on the edge, a runoff tackle. They've really done a great job mixing it up. I'm, I'm a, you know, I see what Coach Wilkerson says when he talks about how well coached they are. Boy, on, on offense, they've got some guys that uh, know what they're doing. They've got a lot of experience. Brister is number two in total offense among all active FCS players for his career. He's third in passing yards. Rose, number five in receiving yards and career touchdown catches among active players. And he's number 16 in career receptions. Eastern has a player, Justin Thomas, who is ahead of Rose on those career lists, but Thomas is out with an injury. All right, first and 10, Lindenwood. Have it at the Eastern 26 with a minute to go in the half and one timeout. Brister rolls out to his left, sets up. Now I'm going to loft it deep into the left corner of the end zone. Nobody there. It's incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 coming up. Top the clock with 53 seconds to go in the first half. Brister now 10 out of 16 passing. Make it 11 out of 16. 11 out of 17. 97 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions. The officials are having a conference here. They're talking about whether or not that should have been intentional grounding. Looked to me like he, cer he certainly threw it past the line of scrimmage. The only discussion would be did he get outside the tackle box when he let the pass go. Chris Wilkerson saying, we'll take the penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Chris, they haven't called it yet. Now they do. They throw the flag. Here comes the call. Personal foul. Illegal block oh. on the waist. Offense number 22. 15-yard penalty. Replay first down. Well, that was uh, for a block below the waist. That's about the slowest flag I've ever seen, Dave. Uh, you know, I almost said that. Boy, it looked like because our edge the rusher there, one of the inside guys, was starting to uh, – Bear down on Brister, and all of a sudden he went down with the block, and I kind of wondered why that wasn't a block below the waist. It was a cut block on the uh, the edge rusher from Eastern, so 15-yard penalty. I'm just not quite sure why it took him so long to throw that flag. <laughs> yeah, that was, in, that was in wide open right out there in front of everybody. First and 25 for Lindenwood at the 41 of Eastern. Brister drops back, has time. Now he's going to drift up in the pocket. Now he's going to run at the 40 to the 35, and that's all he'll make. He'll be stopped right there. Picked up six on that scramble. Clock runs. It'll be second down and about 20 to go coming up. Linwood gets lines up without a huddle. Clock moving, 32 seconds to go. They've got a timeout. Second down, 20 yards to go. Brister drops back. EIU rushing three. Brister in the pocket. Drifting around, now rolls out to his right. Now under pressure, throws it out of bounds. Incomplete, and a penalty flag. Eastern's going to be called for a late hit on the quarterback, and that's going to give a first down to Lindenwood. I think it's Zay Gentry that came in and hit the quarterback late as he was releasing that pass out of bounds. Stops the clock at 16 seconds to go. 
It's going to be a first down coming up for Lindenwood on this penalty. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 27, hitting the quarterback in a passing posture low, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The first down is not the most hurtful thing here. It's going to be the yardage for Lindenwood because that moves them into field goal range and gives them a better, much better crack at the end zone with only 16 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, it was a little bit of wind at their back also. Get the ball at the 20-yard line, first down, 10 to go. 16 seconds to go in the half. Lindenwood's got one timeout, so they can get, it. I'd say, at least three plays out of this, maybe four. Three receivers go to the right for Lindenwood, first and 10 at the 20 of Eastern. Now they motion Williams through the backfield. They fake it, back to pass. Brister guns the middle, caught, touchdown. Caught at the goal line, and it's a touchdown for Lindenwood. Hey, Abe Hare touchdown. with the catch, back up tight end. May have bobbled it just a little bit, but he held on right at the goal line. 20 yard touchdown pass with four seconds to go in the, make it nine seconds to go in the first half. Oh, how the world turns, as they say. We had him way back there, had a little bit of momentum. That penalty really, really hurt. Yeah, again, it gave him the chance to move him up close enough to take that crack at the end zone, and they hit Hare with a 20 yard touchdown pass to take the lead. And now Cyberg will try to tack on the extra point and put Lindenwood up by four points with nine seconds to go in the first half. There's the snap, kick is up, and the Cybert kick is good. We'll hold it here. Nice drive for Lindenwood. After the EIU field goal that gave the Panthers the lead, Lindenwood goes 75 yards in 13 plays. Another look at the touchdown pass here. You can see the route run by Hare. He started in the slot on the left and cut to the inside, and. Jordan Vincent was in pretty good position and good throw by Brister, kept it low where Vincent could not knock it down and Hare went down and made the catch at the goal line for the touchdown. So 14 to 10, Lindenwood has got the lead with only nine seconds left in the half. Eastern will get the ball first to start the second half. So good momentum for Lindenwood as they go to the locker room, unless something really bad happens to them. Now last week, Central Arkansas returned to kickoff for a touchdown in that game. Got to think that uh, Jed Stuger's not going to let any chance of that happen in here. Eastern out of timeouts with nine seconds to go in the half. Logan Cyber to kick off for Lindenwood. And the ball blows off the tee. Nice day here in Charleston. Just to almost 60 degrees, sunny skies. A few more clouds than we had at the start of the day, but no threat of rain. Just a light wind. Looks like more out of the south right now, which would be at the back of Seibert on this kickoff. Here's Seibert on the run up, and he hits a squib kick, bouncing downfield over the head of one Panther defender, scooped up at the 11 by Armstead. He's at the 15, and he'll be tackled right there. Armstead. A five-yard return for Armstead. Stops the clock with five seconds to go in the first half. Well, Panthers will have one play here, but probably are going to just run out the clock and try to figure out what to do to start the second half. 14 to 10, Lindenwood's got the lead. They've outscored Eastern 14 to three in the second quarter. Eastern missed a chance in the first quarter to get an early touchdown off a takeaway when they fumbled the ball inside the 10 yard line. Schaffner at quarterback, first and 10 from the 15. Schaffner hands it to Pierre, works around the left side across the 20, got up to the 23, and time has expired on that eight yard run, and that'll be the end of the first half. So good first half, well competed. And at halftime, it's Eastern Illinois down. It's Lindenwood 14, Eastern Illinois 10. Back to a recap first half scoring in just a moment. It's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network.
halftime at O'Brien Field in Charleston. Lindenwood's got a 14-10 lead over Eastern Illinois. Panthers took the lead in the first quarter off a Lindenwood turnover at the nine-yard line. On fourth down, Jonah O'Brien scored on a one-yard quarterback sneak to put Eastern ahead 7 to nothing. Lindenwood tied the game early in the second, a 75-yard drive. Justin Williams, a five-yard touchdown run, tied the game 7-7. Another Lindenwood turnover in the middle of the second quarter, an interception by Colin Bohannon gave Eastern the ball near midfield and led to a 31-yard field goal by Stone Galloway that gave Eastern a 10-7 lead. But after that, Lindenwood put together a 75-yard drive, and Brisker, Brisker hit Abe Hare with a 20-yard touchdown pass with nine seconds to go in the first half. Lindenwood's got a 14-10 halftime lead over Eastern Illinois. We'll take a break, come back, check scores of other games in just a moment. It's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Take a look at our Ohio Valley Conference news and notes at halftime. Here's the OVC standings. Tennessee Martin at 3-0. Southeast Missouri at 2-0 at the top of the league. They both are off today, and they do not play each other this year. So if they keep winning and end up in a tie, it would take a coin toss to break the winner and determine who gets the playoff bid in the OVC. Eastern Illinois at 1-0. There's one game underway besides this one involving an OVC team. Austin P has got a 7-3 lead over Murray State in the first quarter in a non-conference game. Later tonight, Tennessee, Te uh, Tennessee State meets Tennessee Tech. Around the state of Illinois, Southern Illinois leads Western Illinois 23-7. That's at halftime. South Dakota's got a 7-6 halftime lead at Illinois State. Youngst Youngstown State is ahead 46-35 in the third quarter over Indiana State. Northern Illinois leads Eastern Michigan 17-7 in the second quarter. And Illinois won today 26-14 over Minnesota. We'll take a break, come back and check first half statistics. It's 14-10, Lindenwood ahead of Eastern Illinois at halftime. Back in a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Lindenwood ahead 14 to 10 over Eastern Illinois at halftime. Our first half statistics brought to you by Digital Scoreboards, a proud supporter of the OVC. Digital Scoreboards provides indoor and outdoor displays. Lindenwood pretty dominant in a lot of the stat areas here. They had 18 first downs to five by Eastern. Total yards, 235 for Lindenwood, 136 for EIU. Lindenwood almost perfect balance, 118 rushing, 117 passing. Eastern had 80 yards rushing, 56 passing. The, what's kept Eastern close are turnovers. Lindenwood had three, Eastern only had one. Penalties, two for 23 yards by Lindenwood, two for 20 for Eastern. Time of possession, almost 20 minutes, 1919 for Lindenwood, only 1041 for Eastern. Lindenwood, three for six on third down, Panthers went 0 for four. Individual numbers, leading rusher Justin Williams of Lindenwood, 10 carries for 50. Andrew Martin had seven carries for 45. Markenzie Pierre leads Eastern with seven carries, 47 yards. Passing, Brister, 12 to 17, 117 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. O'Brien, five to seven for 26 yards. Schaffner, one for two for five yards for Eastern. Peyton Rose, leading receiver in the game, four catches, 44 yards. Isaiah Hill leads Eastern with two catches for 34. Leading tackler, David Whitmore's got four tackles to lead Lindenwood. Tyrus Harvey, a cornerback, has got seven tackles to lead Eastern Illinois. We'll take a break and then be ready to start the second half when we come back to O'Brien Field. It's Lindenwood 14, Eastern Illinois 10. Back in just a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Nearing the start of the second half at O'Brien Field, every year the Fred Mitchell Award is given to the top college place kicker from the FCS level down to the junior college level. There's over 750 teams that play at those levels. In September, they recognize 29 kickers on the watch list, and including one from each of these teams. Logan Seibert of Lindenwood, a sophomore, seven of eight on his field goal tries this year. He's from Belleville West. And then Stone Galloway, who's from Collinsville and went to Belleville Altoff. Stone, with the first half field goal he made today, he's seven for seven on his field goal tries. So between the two of them, they're 14 of 15 on field goal tries this year. That award um, named in honor of Fred Mitchell, the longtime Chicago Tribune columnist, 
who was a kicker at Wittenberg University back in his playing days. I did not know that until the, just the other day. I did not know either. Fred came down and covered a track meet one year at Eastern Illinois, the IHSA state track meet. Uh, worked with him one year. Really, really a nice guy and a great rider. Covered a variety of sports for the Tribune. I think the last assignment was the Bears. He's been retired a few years now. Well, Eastern the last two weeks, Dave, in their two wins, has had a double-digit lead at halftime and played it really conservative in the second half. That approach isn't going to work here. They're down by four at halftime. No, he's, as we were talking here during the break, I kind of believe Joan O'Brien is the route they ought to go. He offers them, you know, the, as we say, the complimentary offense. That's the buzzword here in this decade, which means you can run it and you can pass it. But we just have not been able to get any rhythm going at all which has been a surprise since Lindenwood's weakness has been defense the last three weeks. As we pointed out, they've given up an average of 50 points. We've not been able to get anything going, so I'm really hoping that they had some answers here at halftime. We're going to find out. Panthers only had 136 yards in the first half. Fairly balanced, 80 rushing, 56 passing. The reason there's no rhythm is Eastern only had five first downs in the first half, and Lindenwood had 18. You look at the stats, Eastern's a little fortunate to be down only 14-10. All right, Lindenwood will kick off. They'll have the wind at their back in the third quarter, so Eastern will have it in the fourth. It's not a big win, but a uh, slight factor. Logan Seibert to kick off. Armstead is deep for Eastern, along with, I think, Zay Gentry back there. 14-10 Lindenwood as we get the third quarter underway. Kick goes to the far side, bouncing down to Armstead, who latches it go out of bounds. And so the Panthers will get to take the ball at the 35 after that penalty. All right, see who's going to come out to quarterback EIU to start the third quarter. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. It's a pretty good field position for the Panthers to start. Dom Schaffner comes out to quarterback Eastern. It was his turn, so the rotation continues. Wilman, Manavez, Niall Hill all come wide to the right. Isaiah Hill wide to the left. Isaiah playing his first game this year. His next catch will be the 100th of his Eastern Illinois career. Pierre at running back on first down, takes the handoff into the middle, runs into a blocker and gets up to the 28. Hill went quickly into the middle and ran into his own blocker there in the center. I think that's uh, the center, Michael McNichol, as he ran into, who helped bring him down on the tackle. Gain of three up to the 38. It'll be second down, seven yards to go. Schaffner in the first half completed two, one out of two for five yards, so they're much more run-oriented with him in the game. Second down, seven yards to go. Out of the shotgun, Schaffner. Takes the snap, hands it into the middle, Pierre, trying to get around the left corner. He's grabbed and escorted out of bounds for no gain on the play. Good job by Lennon was Devin Edwards, a sophomore transfer from Colorado State who um, walked on at Colorado State and back in 2020. He played every game there last year, mainly on special teams. He made the tackle on that one for no gain. Panthers have had a lot of this today. Third down long, third and seven. Have it at their 38. Trail the game 14 to 10, just started third quarter. Hill, wide left with Wilman. Tight ends at the right end of the line. Valley alongside Menavez. There goes Wilman in motion. Third down, seven to go. Schaffner drops back to pass. They rush four. Schaffner throws over the middle, caught by Isaiah Hill. Turns the corner 45, and still on his feet to nearly the 50 for a first down. Crossing pattern, and Schaffner hit Isaiah Hill, waist high with a pass, and it's a first down. Panthers convert their first third down today. They were 0 for 4 before that one. Spot the ball at midfield. First and 10, Eastern Illinois. That for Hill, the 100th catch of his Eastern career. Also caught a couple at San Diego, or rather South Dakota State, before he transferred to Eastern. First and 10, Panthers. Schaffner fakes a handoff, looking to pass. Now rolls right. Now throws it out of bounds. There's a penalty flag, two of them, in the offensive backfield. Referee is Garrett Dickerson. Here comes the call. Holding. Offense, number 55, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. That's Terrence Shaw, the offensive guard who made his first start for Eastern today, called for offensive holding. 
So that'll put the Panthers back at the 40. That's the third penalty for Eastern for 30 yards today. First down, 20 yards to go. Panthers have trouble overcoming major pen. Everybody does, but uh, Panthers just don't have enough offensive firepower to regularly overcome penalties. Wilman to the left, and the Hills are wide to the right. First down, 20, EIU at their 40-yard line. Schaffner sends Niall Hill in motion. Schaffner's going to keep it. He's in trouble, and he got back to the line of scrimmage pretty much all on his own. That pocket closed in on him quickly as he tried to find his way out from what was supposed to be a quarterback draw, and Schaffner got no gain on the play. So it'll be second down, 20 yards to go. 14 to 10, Lyndon Woods got the lead. We've just started the third quarter at O'Brien Field. Panthers sub Jay Valley, a tight end into the game. Take out Niall Hill. Send Cooper Willman wide to the left with Darius Smith at wide receiver. And again, a double tight end set at the right end of the line on second down, 20 to go. Schaffner claps his hands, drops back, looking and throwing to the left. It's caught by Darius Smith, and he could not break a tackle. He almost did, but Edwards got enough of him to bring him down for a nine-yard gain. There's a penalty flag after the play in the secondary behind, behind the defense. Guessing the nine-yard gain is going to stand, and then we'll see what the flag is which, for some late action after the play. Thrown by the back judge behind the defense. Here comes the signal. After the play, personal foul, offense, 13, 15 yard penalty, third down. So Cooper Willman got called for the personal foul for the late hit on Lindenwood. So the gain is for nine yards to Darius Smith, but the penalty more than offsets that. And now the Panthers have it way back after the penalty at their 34, and they've got third down now and 26 yards to go. Eastern has not had a lot of penalties this year and very few like that, but that one hurt. Four penalties, 45 yards today. They've had penalties on back-to-back -back plays here. All right, third down, a long way to go. Back, Schaffner, quarterback draw, across the 35, runs over a man at the 40, ends up at the 42 for a gain of about eight. So fourth and long coming up. Eastern will have to punt it. And Lindenwood will get the ball back with the lead here in the third quarter. Will Hoyt into punt, averaging 40 and a half today on two kicks. Spencer Red back to return. Lindenwood third in the OVC, averaging seven and a half yards per return on the year. Spencer Red, a dangerous return man out of Sacred Heart Griffin High School in Springfield. All right, here's Will Hoyt awaiting the snap from Jack Valente on fourth and long. Good snap. Gets the kick out of there. It's a low kick. It's going to bounce at the 30, take a neutral bounce. Panthers down it pretty much right there. Not one of Will Hoyt's better punts this year. Only 28 yards. Timeout on the field, the third quarter. It's Lindenwood 14, Eastern Illinois 10. We'll be back in a moment. This is the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Eastern Illinois head coach Chris Wilkerson looking on. His first homecoming game as the coach of the Panthers. It's been a frustrating game for him so far. Lindenwood has got the lead 14 to 10. This is their first possession of the second half, and they start in good position at their 30-yard line. Brister has got at Andrew Martin lined up at running back on first down, 10 to go. They motion a man through. They hand to Martin over the right side, fights across the 35, and got up to the 37. Jordan Miles on the tackle for Eastern, the sophomore out of Indianapolis. But a good first down run, seven yards for Martin. Martin's having a good day. He's got nine carries for 56 yards. Leading rusher for the year for Lindenwood. Fourth in the OVC coming in. Second down, three yards to go. Brister sends Martin in motion, and they fake it to Martin. Brister on the keep. Miles grabbed him and tackled him for a loss. As soon as he came out with the fake, Miles grabbed Brister and stopped him on the 45-yard line for a loss. Now, let me get a one-yard loss of the 46. So good play for Jordan Miles. Puts Lindenwood into third down. At their 36, they've got third down, four yards to go. They're three for six today on third down. 
Brister drops back to pass, sets up, looking to the left, now scrambles to the left, pressured by Willis. Now he scrambles back to the right, fakes a pass. He's going to run, hurdles into the air, and gets the first down at the 41. Good job by Brister to fake a pass and kind of keep the Panther defenders from closing up on him. Elijah with Tolbert made the tackle, but Brister got just enough for the first down at the 41-yard line. Yeah, give him credit for scrambling. Looked a little bit like Fran Tarkenton. Of course, I age myself when I say that, but he ran all over the place during that first down. Started left and then ended up running to the right to pick up the gain. First and 10, Lindenwood at their 41. Back to pass. Panthers blitz him. He's going to run with it. Up to the 45, he slides down there. Bohannik on the tackle. It looked like as soon as he saw that blitz coming, Dave, he basically put it under his arm and took off. Yeah, for a second there, I wasn't sure. He just kind of hesitated. But, uh, again, that's where the experience showed the savvy to know exactly what to do to handle that blitz. They spot him back at the 44 where he started to slide. Second down, 7, Lindenwood. 14-10, to 10, they lead the game in the third quarter. Brister hands to Martin up the middle. Not much room. Might have lost a yard. Black-shirted Panthers all over across the front line there. No gain on the play. Cam Leach is in on that tackle for Eastern. Looked like Bohannik was there as well. No gain for Martin. Okay, big play for the Eastern defense. Third down seven. They need to get a stop. Brister brings Lindenwood up to the line. He sends Smith wide to the left with Lawn Creek. Got Rose wide to the right. Third down seven, line to gain the Eastern 49. Back to pass, Brisker pressure. Brisker gonna throw it deep down the middle, incomplete. Intended for Peyton Rose. Ball led him a little too much. Armstead and Tyrus Harvey on the coverage for EIU. It'll be fourth down. Well, you a station break, let's do it right here. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Panther Sports Network. Second punt to the punt. Riley Ripper takes the snap and gets the kick away. It's a low kick. Wilman runs left, takes it at the 18, and is pushed out of bounds at about the 20 yard line. About a two yard return for Wilman. We've got a timeout on the field with 8.16 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a break. It's still Lindenwood 14, Eastern Illinois 10. Back in a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Second possession of the second half for Eastern Illinois. Jonah O'Brien comes out at quarterback. Panthers start at their 20-yard line. Trail the game 14-10. Two receivers go to the right, couple of tight ends at the left end of the line. Snap, and a fake and a keep by O'Brien, runs it left into the middle, and he got up to the 25. A fake to Pierre, O'Brien kept it over left tackle and picked up five. O'Brien has got seven carries now for 33. He's the second leading rusher today for Eastern behind Mackenzie Pierre. I think Pierre's taken every snap at running back. Second down, five to go Eastern at their 25 yard line. Wilman wide to the left, couple of wideouts head right. It's Niall Hill in the slot inside Darius Smith to the right side for Eastern on second down five. O'Brien waits the shotgun snap, drops back to pass. O'Brien's going to throw it to the right sideline and a nice catch by Smith on a low ball. It's a first down at the 33. Smith had to come back for it on a low pass and he gathered it in for a gain of eight. First down, Eastern Illinois. Third catch today for Darius Smith, a sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky. First and 10, EIU trail the game 14 to 10. We're just past the midway mark in the third quarter, 7-10 on the clock and it's running. O'Brien on first down and 10 at the 33. High snap, fakes a handoff, back to pass, throwing deep down the middle, got Smith out there, got it at the 30, taken down there. Darius Smith on the deep post play, hold it in, it's a long gain and a first down for Eastern Illinois. That was pretty nice coverage by Lindenwood, but I give Smith great credit for really focus, really concentrate on that pass reception. And to spot the ball at the 29 of Lindenwood is a 38 yard gain, longest gain of the day for either team. First and 10, Eastern Illinois at the 29 of Lindenwood. Here's O'Brien. 
Out of the shotgun, hands off to Pierre, trying to get around the left end, turns the corner at the 25 and is pushed out. Devin Edwards again pushed him out of bounds. He's been in on a lot of plays. Spot Pierre at the 23. It's a six yard gain on first down. Second down four coming up for the Panthers who trail the game 14 to 10. Clock's moving with 6.15 to go third quarter. Eastern on the move at the Lindenwood 23 yard line. Panthers send Smith wide to the left. Niall Hill to the right with Cooper Willman. Second down, four to go. Handoff Pierre into the middle, works left across the 20, close to the first down. Push back right around the sticks. Pierre picked up four, they say first down, Eastern Illinois. Four yard gain to the Lindenwood 19 yard line. Panthers just picked up their ninth first down. It's first and 10 at the Lindenwood 19. Eastern's been in the red zone couple of times and turned it over on one of those tries. Smith to the right with Niall Hill. Wilman to the left. Manavez widens out in the slot to the left on first down at the 19. Now Manavez moves in motion in tight. O'Brien will hand up the middle. Pierre, good hole left side across the 15, bangs down to the 13. Good run for Pierre over left guard. Lloyd Lockett up from safety, a seventh year player out of Platte City, Missouri. Made the tackle for Lindenwood. And this is the first drive that we've really seen what we talked about, getting a little bit of rhythm going. I'd like to see a little bit of the up-tempo here. Second down, four to go for Eastern to the 13 of Lindenwood. O'Brien may have a man offside. He's back. He's throwing into the end zone left side. Jumping catch and touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Darius Smith caught it in the back of the end zone. He was pretty well covered. O'Brien just kind of put it up high. The Arias is only 5'11", but he went up and caught it, and the Panthers have taken the lead in the third quarter. Boy, he has really made some great receptions on this drive. I think we've got maybe another go-to guy after losing Justin Thomas. Smith has stepped up today. Stone Galloway in to try the point after to try to push the lead up to three. Panthers are short a man, but they're... They've got time to get uh, Ira Armstead onto the field and lined up before the play clock runs down. All right, here's Galloway for the extra point try. Good snap, placed down, kicks up, and the kick is good. Nice drive for Eastern, and the Panthers take the lead with 4.51 to go in the third quarter. we got time out on the field. We'll take a break. It's Eastern Illinois 17, Lindenwood 14. Back to O'Brien Field in a moment on OVC on ESPN and the Panthers Sports Network. Best drive of the game for Eastern Illinois. Seven plays, 80 yards, used three minutes, 25 seconds. O'Brien hit three for three passing on that drive. They all went to Darius Smith and they covered 59 total yards on that drive. 17-14, Eastern has got the lead again. As Stone Galloway kicks off, 4.51 to go third quarter. Panthers evened up the time of possession just a little bit with that drive. All right, here's Galloway to kick off. Into a little bit of a wind here. Red and Smith are deep for Lindenwood at the five yard line. Here's Galloway's approach. He's going to try to hit it to the far side. It's a short kick. Red runs up. It bounces. Takes a neutral bounce. And it got lateral from Smith back to Red, who's covered at the 23. Smith looked like a basketball player tipping a loose ball to a teammate when that ball was all up for grabs there for a little bit when it bounced. Wasn't the smartest play on Lyndon Wood's part, but uh, they survived. They still have the football. Smith came dashing across on the ball, bounced high, and he jumped up in the air and tipped it backwards to red. I'm not sure it wasn't about a smart play. He kept, kept, kept Eastern from having a chance to uh, get to the football. First and 10 for the Lions at their 23. Two receivers to the left. Peyton Rose wide to the right on first down. Fake handoff, Brister back to pass, pressure from behind. He steps up, throws to the right, caught by Smith at the 40, pushed out by Phoenix Porter at the 43. It's in a gain of 20 and a first down for Lindenwood. So back come the Lions as Kobe Smith makes his third catch. Smith played a fair amount at San Diego State in four years there. He started 19 games 
caught 83 passes. First and 10 at their 44 for Lindenwood. Brister back, looking and throwing to the left. Short pass, caught at the 50, and taken down immediately is Peyton Rose. Good low tackle for Eastern by Zay Gentry. But a gain of five on that quick pass to Rose in the left flat. Second down, five to go Lindenwood. They trail 17 to 14. Eastern's got the lead. Four minutes to go third quarter. Lindenwood gets lined up on second down, six to go. Brister drops back. Panthers rush four. Brister moves to his left. Now he's going to run with it and run out of bounds at his 48. Might have lost a yard on that play. Good coverage by the Panthers because Brister had time to throw. Couldn't find anybody. He kept it, ran to the left. No gain on the play. Ball still at the 49. Big play here. Third down and five for Lindenwood. They're three for seven on third down. They send three receivers to the right side. Have a tight end, Lawn Creed, at the left end of the line in tight. Third and five. Panthers had a safety sneaking up like he wanted to blitz. It was Coates. Now he falls back. Justin Williams in the game and running back for this third down play for Lindenwood. Brister drops back. Steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to run at the 50. He's got a first down to the 45 and slides down at the 43. Oyewale was there for EIU. Brister couldn't find anybody open but found a hole to get out of the pocket and gain about seven. First down Lindenwood. 17-14, 17-14, to 14, Eastern Illinois leads it. We're down to three minutes to go in the third quarter. First and 10, Lindenwood at the 44 of Eastern. Three receivers head left. Brister hands out, takes the shotgun snap. Four-man rush as he drops back. He moves to his left, being chased. Now gets the pass away, out of bounds, incomplete. Panthers put on good pressure. Trajan Lewis, now check it, Terrence Simon and Tim Varga and Joel Barrows were putting on pressure. Yeah, we were able to chase, but we just can't quite catch here in this second half. Well, even late in the first half, he's pretty elusive back there. He sees it before it gets there. It's, it's his, uh, he just uh, is a real visionary, I guess, when it comes to seeing the play before it happens or seeing, seeing what's going to be open as it unfolds. In this case, seeing that the pressure is going to be on and to get away. Second and 10, Lindenwood at the 44 of EIU. Brister drops back. Panthers blitz. They pick it up. Brister over the middle. Pass got tipped. Incomplete. Nick Coates came on a blitz, but somebody in the middle got a hand on the pass and knocked it down. I say Terrence Simon got to that. So it's going to be third and ten. Another big third down play for Lindenwood. Panthers sub a new defensive line. Four in, four out. Trying to keep those pass rushers fresh. Third and 10 for the Lions at the Eastern 44. Line to gain the 34 to make the first down. Four receivers on the play. Loncrete and Smith to the right. Rose and Bethany to the left. Williams at running back. Three down linemen for Eastern. They rush on third and 10. Back to pass. Brister guns it to the left. Low throw. Rose caught it, I think, at the 34. And it's just enough for the first down. Brister really gunned that one, kept it low, and Rose came back and caught it low for the first down. Really a great catch by Rose. He was virtually on the ground. I wasn't even sure it was complete. Good throw, too, by Brister, throwing over the middle to keep that thing low and out of trouble. 17-14 to 14 Eastern. Lindenwood's got a first down at the Panther 34 with 2.13 to go in the third quarter. Two receivers head to the right, one to the left. Brister rolls out to the right, pass in the flat, caught at the 28 by Smith. He, I think, has another first down at the 22. Pushed out of bounds on the far side by Gentry, but it's a gain of 12 and a first down as Smith just made his fourth catch of the game. So Lindenwood on the move. They've This will be the ninth play of the drive. They've moved it 55 yards. They've converted twice on third down on this drive. They've got it first and 10, trail the game by three. Minute 44 to go third quarter. One receiver right, two go left. First and 10, Lindenwood. Brister fakes a handoff and keeps on a run to the right. He's at the 20, cuts in at the 15, first down at the 10, gets down to about the nine yard line. Brister, a patient run, waiting for his blockers and kind of just picking his way downfield, picked up 13. First and goal, Lindenwood at the nine yard line. This is just a really good offensive football team. Good quarterback, offensive lines, veteran group that does a nice job, and some good skill skill players, too. First and goal at the nine. 
Brister fakes a handoff, rolls right, sets up. Now he's going to keep it up the middle, got to the six. Brister looked into the end zone, could not find anybody open, so then tucked it and kept it for a gain of about three. Second down and goal at the six for Lindenwood. Panthers again sub in a new defensive line. Put the ball on the seven yard line, make it second down. Clock's moving, 40 seconds to go third quarter. Lindenwood taking more time here between plays. They're down by three. All right, second and goal at the seven for Lindenwood. Brister looking over the defense. Sends a man in motion. They blow the play dead, and I think Lindenwood might have taken a timeout with the play clock about to run out. False start. Offense, number 51. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. The center, Connor Mazzotto, got called for the false start. So that will put him back on the 12-yard line. They, all, they sent a man in motion through the backfield and almost snapped the ball into him on that play. Wouldn't have counted because they blew it dead. But the snap almost hit the motion man before it got to the quarterback. They, they were just sort of out of sync on that play, and that is rare. They are not out of sync often. All right, second down goal. The clock's moving. 14 seconds to go, and Lindenwood looking like they're just going to walk away here and let the clock run out. So that'll be the end of the third quarter at O'Brien Field. Yeah, you got the only points of the quarter. And after three, it's Eastern 17, Lindenwood 14. Back for big plays to start the fourth quarter in a moment. It's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Good game at O'Brien Field. We go to the fourth quarter. Eastern Illinois leads Lindenwood 17-14. Lindenwood's got the ball at the Panthers' 12-yard line. Second down, goal to go. Trying to get the go-ahead touchdown here early in the fourth quarter. Lindenwood now moving from the north to the south, so they've got a little bit of wind in their face here in the fourth quarter. Justin Williams in the game at running back, alongside Brister, who's in the shotgun. On second and goal at the 12. Brister drops back, looking to his left, steps up, dodged the rush. Now he's hit, and Tolbert will sack him at the 17-yard line. Brister stood in there, Dave, and couldn't find anybody, and by the time he tried to get out, Eastern had him closed off. It's going to be third down and long now from outside the 15. It's a third sack today for EIU. Yeah, that pocket just totally collapsed around him. That's been a little bit unusual today because usually he's he's been able to uh, loot that and find some running room and then be able to find an open receiver. One and a half sacks on the season now for linebacker Elijah Tolbert for Eastern, the sophomore. All right, 10 on the play clock as Lindenwood lines up at the 17 of Eastern. Third down goal to go. They're down by three. Here's Brister, back to pass. Panthers rush three, short one over the middle, caught at the 15 by Williams, broke a tackle, gets another to the 10, and that's it. Coach will bring him down there. They threw it short to Williams, hoping he would run it in. He broke a couple of tackles, but Nick Coates brought him down after a seven-yard gain. So fourth and goal, and Logan Seibert, who has made eight of nine this year, I'm sorry, seven of eight this year, three in a row, in to try his first field goal today. Call this a 27-yard try. The holder is Cole Duggar, the backup quarterback. The snapper is a redshirt freshman, Nelson Pipes. Ball's just inside the right hash mark into a little bit of wind. Trying for the game-time field goal. Good snap. Kicks up, and the kick is good. So Lindenwood ties the game with 13.26 to go. We're going to take a break. Lindenwood 17, Eastern 17, early in the fourth quarter. Back in a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Eastern Illinois has scored three times in this game. Every time the Panthers have scored, Lindenwood has answered with a long drive to score on their own. That time, a 67-yard drive, 13 plays, almost six and a half minutes, and Lindenwood got the game-tying field goal. So we're tied up, 17 all, 13 and a half minutes to go in the game, and Lindenwood set to kick off. One stat that really jumps out, Mike, Lindenwood has run 63 plays to Eastern's 38. Even though they haven't controlled the time on the clock necessarily, they still had a lot more opportunities on offense. Darius Smith is deep along with Ira Armstead for Eastern. That's Logan Seibert will kick off. 
He hits a high short one. Panthers are going to, I think, signal fair catch. And Logan Brown out of Effingham, a defensive player, takes the fair catch at the 22. Let's take a look at our upcoming schedule. It's presented by the Kentucky State Police, where they're hiring the next generation of troopers. Eastern Illinois on the road at Tennessee State next week, and then home in two weeks to meet Tennessee Tech. Lindenwood will be home next week, and they're going to take on Murray State next week. Panthers will start at the 25 after the fair catch. Lindenwood two in a row at home. They've got William Jewell coming up on the 29th of October, too. Dom Schaffner back at quarterback for Eastern as the rotation continues. First and 10 Panthers at their 25. Quarterback draws Schaffner into the middle. Dragged down. Gained only two. Nice tackle one-on-one -on -one by David Whitmore of Lindenwood, a linebacker. O'Brien or uh, Schaffner's hard to bring down one-on-one -on -one like that. Two-yard gain to the 27. Second down eight. I'm not seeing not or Isaiah Hill in the game in the second half. He's on the sideline, not moving around, but may have kind of uh, tweaked that knee perhaps, and he's not been in the game at wide receiver. Second and eight Panthers at their 27. Schaffner back, rolls out to his right, throws it up the right sideline, and it's caught at the 40-yard line for a first down. Good throw from Schaffner, a low throw, and again, it's Darius Smith on the catch. He's having a big day, just caught his sixth pass. Picked up 13, first and 10 Panthers at their 40. Six catches, 86 yards, and a touchdown for Darius Smith today, a wide receiver for Eastern. Panthers first and 10 at their 40-yard line. He tied the game, 17 all, early fourth quarter. Schaffner, handoff to Pierre, but a penalty flag, and they blow it dead. It's going to be a false start against Eastern. False start. Offense, number 66, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Put the ball back on the 35 after that false start penalty on Jack Valente, the right tackle. First down, 15 to go. We'll see if Eastern can overcome that penalty. They've got not a lot of penalties today. Five penalties for 50, but um, they are drive killers when they get them. Smith to the right, Wilman to the left. First down, back to pass. Now I think Lindenwood's offside. Schaffner throws. It's incomplete at midfield. Intended for Smith. There was contact between him and the defender. There's a penalty flag on the near side. Where I think offside. Was offside. Defense, Defense, number 91. Five-yard Five penalty. penalty remains first down. Kobe McClendon called for being offside. Good coverage over there by Wesley Hines, a cornerback from Lindenwood. He was locked up with Smith. Schaffner tried a back shoulder throw, and uh, Hines was able to break it up. But the Panthers get the yardage they lost on the uh, false start penalty right back on an offside. So, again, it's first and 10. Eastern at their 40 with 12.06 to go. We're tied up at 17 all in the fourth quarter. Dom Schaffner sends Pierre in motion to empty out the backfield. It's a quarterback draw to the right. Schaffner only got two. Whitmore on the tackle again at the 42-yard line. It'll be second and eight. Schaffner last week had such a big rushing day, 134 against Northwestern State. They really held him down today. Six carries, 25 yards. Credit Lindenwood. They are so fundamentally sound, Mike. They really just stay home. They are anticipating what Schaffner is going to do, and they've shut him down. Second down, nine for Eastern at their 41. Uh, fake, they're going to hand to Pierre, sweeping to the right, hit at the line. It's going to be pushed out of bounds. So Pierre not able to turn the corner as Lindenwood did a nice job to force him inside and then finish that off for no gain on the play. Back they're going to mark it for a short loss back to the 40 yard line. Third down, 10 to go Eastern. Line to gain is the 50. Panthers are one of six on third down. Tie game, 11 minutes to go. Eastern sends two receivers to the left, one to the right. Third and 10. Here's Schaffner out of the shotgun. Moves Manavez in motion over to the right slot. Schaffner back. It's a four man rush. He's in trouble in the pocket, and he's sacked. I think he actually tripped over the leg of his offensive lineman, Terrence Shaw, as he tried to get out of the pocket. And Schaffner went down back on the 33-yard line. It's the first sack for Lindenwood today. So fourth and long, punt team on the field for Eastern. Not sure Schaffner was going to get very far had he even uh, been able to get out of the pocket here. But he definitely tripped over Shaw as he tried to get away. 
All right, here's Trey Wilhoyt now with some wind at his back in the punt on fourth and 17 at his 33. Spencer read the deep man for Lindenwood. Valente to snap it for Eastern. Good snap. Wilhoyt angles this one to the right down the far sideline. Smith drops, drops back to his 20. Kobe Smith dodged a man, broke a tackle. Still going at the 25. Gets outside and a good open field tackle at the 28 brings him down. Nice tackle in the open field for Eastern by Michael Jaros. We got a timeout on the field. We're tied up with 9.49 to go. It's Eastern 17, Lindenwood 17. Back in just a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. High score, Eastern Illinois 17, Lindenwood 17, 9.49 to go in the game. Both teams have got all three timeouts remaining. Lindenwood takes over at their 29-yard line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left on this first down play. Cade Brister drops back. Now it's going to run on a quarterback draw. Gets outside to the left at the 30, runs out of bounds, close to the 35. Give him a five-yard gain to the 34. Game's up for grabs, Dave, in the fourth. The odd thing is Eastern's the team has been in FCS a long time. Lindenwood, the team moving up out of Division Two, But when it comes to confidence to win, Lindenwood's probably got more. They've had a lot of success the last couple of years. Eastern's only won three games in three years. Yeah, I was talking about it. One of the keys is Eastern to keep believing. Lindenwood keeps believing. Second down five. Brister back. Short pump fake. Now he's in trouble and sacked. He made the pump fake. He wanted to go deep, and Cam Leach said no way. Made the sack, his second of the year, back at the 27. Big play by Leach out of Nazareth Academy in Chicago, a junior. It's the fourth sack today for Eastern. Second year, week in a row, they've had four sacks. All right, Lindenwood now backed up at their 27. Third down, 12 to go. They spread receivers all over the place. Two to the left, three to the right. Line to gain is the 39. They'll snap it at the 27 on third down. Brister taking a lot of time here between plays. Gets the snap and drops back. Brister, a lot of time down the middle. Caught for a first down. Kobe Smith at the 47. Took a hard hit from Vincent, but held on. 20-yard gain and a first down. Crossing route, and Smith got open in the deep middle, and a good throw for Brister over the linebackers in front of the deep guys for 20 yards. So Lindenwood converts on third and 17. First and 10 for them now with 8.15 to go. Tie game, Eastern Illinois 17. Lindenwood 17. Panthers did not get much rush on him that time on third and long. No, you just give him an extra second or two. He's going to find somebody. Three receivers head right on first and 10 from the 47. They fake a handoff. Brister back has to step up. Now he throws too high, incomplete. Intended for the tight end Lawn Creed on the sideline at the 38. Elijah Ball had the coverage for Eastern. They made that time they made Brister step up in the pocket and then he kind of had to throw while as, as he stepped up and he threw it a little bit high for Lawn Creek. Yeah, it looked like he almost threw off the wrong foot there. Second and 10 Lindenwood at their 47. High score, just under eight minutes to go in the game. Been a good game here at O'Brien Field today. They, can, they do hand it off this time. It's Martin. He's grabbed and stopped for no gain. Martin took the handoff trying to go left and a good play by Terrence Simon, the nose tackle, to bring him down. Called a third and ten. No gain on that play for Martin. So again, third and long for Lindenwood. They just converted on third and 17. Now it's third and ten. Same set. Two receivers left, three right. See if they go deep middle again. Brister ready for the snap. Now checks with the sideline. Clock's ticking down to 7.18 to go in the game. It's tied up at 17. Both teams have got all three timeouts remaining. Here's Brister back. Three-man rush. Brister moving right. Grab from behind and sack. Joel Barrows. He fumble. Picked up by Oyewale. He's on his way. 20, 10. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Barrows with the sack. Oyewale with the strip and the run. And the Panthers have the lead. It's the fourth takeaway for the Panther defense and a defensive touchdown, the scoop and score by Alexander Oyewale, the transfer from Riverside College in California. Barrows came up from behind him. He got him on the 
weak side where Brister couldn't see him coming. Sacked it, Oyewale picked it up and ran it in for the touchdown. Huge play for the Panthers who take the lead 23-17. Exactly seven minutes left in the game. And now Stone Galloway for the extra point. Good snap, kick is up, and the kick is good. We're gonna take a timeout. Eastern Illinois has got the lead again. It's the Panthers 24, Lindenwood 17. Back in just a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. EIU band members celebrating that strip sack by Joel Barrows and the 40-yard scoop and score by Alexander Oyewale. That's given the Panthers a 24-17 lead. Seven minutes to go in the game, and now Stone Galloway will kick off for Eastern. Smith and Red are deep at the five-yard line for Lindenwood. Here's Galloway on the approach, swings the right leg, sends it down the near side. Fair catch signaled at the six-yard line, taken right there. Lindenwood will start at the 25. Panther offense has been struggling to be consistent day get in a flow with well, the defense made a huge play and got their fourth takeaway Set. yeah now let's see if we can do it twice in a row and get Brister under pressure where he maybe panics just a little bit 16 takeaways on the season for Eastern they came in 10th in the country and they've had four today all right I don't think Brister panics often he's a, a cool customer First and 10, Lindenwood at their 25. Brister drops back, four-man rush, steps up. They grab him, he throws over the middle and completes it. And up to the 38 to Longcrete for the first down. Panthers had hands on him when he let that go and he found Longcrete over the middle for a gain of about 12 yards and a first down. Second catch for the tight end Chase Longcrete from Windsor, Colorado, transfer from Northern Colorado. First and 10, Lions at their 37. Back to pass, Brister throws down the middle, wide open at the, at the 40, 35-30, all the way to the Panther 26. Spencer Red on a post route. He was wide open, crossing the middle. Big gain deep into EIU territory. First and 10, Lindenwood after that long pickup. Boy, it's only taken them seconds to move the football down the field. First and 10, Lindenwood at the Eastern Illinois 26-yard line. Tie, or Eastern's got the lead, 24-17. Brister rolling to the right, throwing in the flat, and it's incomplete. Rose went down for the low pass, and it skipped into him, incomplete. The official right on top of it saw it bounce. Incomplete pass, it'll be second and 10. Brister now has completed 19, 20 of 30, 241 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Second and 10, Lindenwood at their 20, at the Eastern 26. Brister has two receivers to the right, one to the left, drops back. Panthers rush three, pass over the middle, caught by Justin Williams across the 20, got a first down, got to the 15. Been a nice job at checking it down to their backs and letting them run for yardage after the catch. 11 yards there. First and 10, Lindenwood at the Eastern 15 yard line. Clock goes under six minutes to play. 24-17, Eastern's got the lead, but Lindenwood back in the red zone. First down, 10. At the 15. Out of the shotgun, Brister. One receiver left, two right, he drops back. A lot of time, Brister pumps, still looking all day long back there. Still looking, now they get after him. He tries to run at the 15 and slides down at the 13. Nick Coates on the tackle. He had all day. That was great coverage by the Panthers to keep him from finding an open man. I kept thinking as much time as he had, he's going to find somebody in that end zone. So credit that young and uh, inexperienced defense, their defensive secondary. They did a great job there. No gain on the play. Second and 10 for Lindenwood at the 15 of Eastern. Clock's ticking down to close to five minutes to go in the game. Panthers ahead by seven. Need a defensive stop here. Second and 10, Brister drops back. Pressure up the middle, they got him, but he got away. He's at the 15, I guess outside of the 10, he's gonna run it into the five, dive for the pylon, and they say he's out of bounds inside the five. He's out at the one yard line. Brister dived and tried to stick the football out toward the goal line, hoping 
that he could cross the plane with it. They rule him out of bounds at the one. It's going to be first and goal. And I was all but sure they had him bottled up back there in the pocket for his sack. Well, again, Panthers had hands on him, but he was able to spin away and then made a nice move to the outside to the open field and pick up 13 yards. First and goal at the one. 4.45 to go. Lindenwood threatening to get the tying touchdown here. Brister. Handoff Williams ran into a blocker. That slowed him down, and he got stopped for a loss at the two. Again, they had a man in motion, and the timing was off a little bit. And when Williams took the handoff, he collided briefly with the motion man. And that gave the Eastern defense time to close and stop him for minus one. Second and goal at the two. Clock's moving with 4.15 to go. Eastern 24. Lindenwood 17. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Williams at running back, second and goal at the two. Brister in the shotgun. Now they look to the far sideline to make sure they want to stick with the play call. Here's Brister, handoff Williams into the middle, lunge for the goal line. The officials say he's short. Stop just short of the goal line. It's going to be third and goal. Ball's inside the one. Ball's on about the one-foot line. Third and goal. Clock's moving. 3.37 to go. Lindenwood, no doubt, in four-down territory here. I can't help believe they're going to try to roll somebody, either Brister or a toss pitch to a running back of some kind to go around the edge. They're going to send Rose to the left. They've got Bethany to the right. Third and goal at the one-foot line. They roll left on an option. They're going to keep it with Brister for the touchdown. He faked the pitch out, kept it himself, and touchdown Lindenwood, and out they get the extra point. They'll tie the game with 3.09 remaining in the game. So, again, what did we say earlier? Every time Eastern has scored, Lindenwood has had an answer with a nice drive, and they do it again here. They kind of, with the motion, they opened up that left side, and Eastern really was outnumbered when they ran the yeah, option to the wide side. That's what I thought. They were going to try to roll out there, and he's, uh, he threatened to, on the option play. All right, here's Seibert. Needs the extra point to tie the game. Good snap. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So we've got timeout with 3.09 left to go in the game. We'll take a break. It's Eastern Illinois 24 and Lindenwood 24. Back in a moment, it's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. It's been a great game here on homecoming weekend at Eastern. 24 all tie between EIU and Lindenwood. Lindenwood to kick off with 3.09 to go. Panthers have got all three timeouts remaining. All right, here's Cyber to kick off into the wind. High short kick. Panthers going to take it at the 20-yard line. Up to the 25. Now to the 29-30 goes to area Smith on the return. So pretty good position for Eastern. Better than they would have got had they fair caught it. Lindenwood's had four scoring drives today. Three of them have been 75 yards. The other was 67, so they've certainly earned their points today. All right, EIU offense on the field. Jonah O'Brien at quarterback. There's 3.04 to go. It's a tie score. Panthers start at their 30, need a score to win the game, and have three timeouts. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. O'Brien will start with a run. Pierre into the middle, tackled at the 33. Pierre got up behind the offensive line, tried to bounce it out to the left, and David Whitmore was there to grab him around the knees and stop him, gain a two. Second down, eight to go. Neither team making a move to stop the clock now. Isaiah Hill is back in the game for Eastern. He's wide to the left, two wide outs to the right on second and eight. O'Brien back to pass, looking and throwing to Hill, caught it at the 40, hit right there and pushed back. I'm not sure he got the first down. Good tackle by Darian Bolden to keep Hill from making any yards after the catch. It's going to be third and one. Isaiah Hill is hard to stop in the open field, and Bolden hit him and pushed him back for no run after the catch. Big play here with 2.15 to go, clock ticking. It's third and one for Eastern at their 39. Panthers only one of seven on third down today. 
O'Brien goes to the shotgun, has Pierre on his right on third down and one. They motion Hill through. They're going to fake it to him. O'Brien on the keep, and he pulled forward, and I think got it. He had to fall forward to the 40 and got just enough. It's a first down for Eastern Illinois. It's a huge conversion there. Minute 50 to go. In pregame warm-up, Stone Galloway, I saw him make a 51-yard field goal in this direction pretty easily. To get to that, the Panthers would need to get it to the 35 of Lindenwood. First and 10 Eastern. Clock ticking. A minute 33 to go in the game. First and 10 at their 40 for EIU. Here's O'Brien out of the shotgun. He's going to throw. Rolls out to his right. O'Brien throwing right sideline incomplete. Intended for Niall Hill. He was open as he broke to the sideline, and O'Brien throwing on the run led him too much. Second and 10. Stops the clock with a minute 22 to go. Well, the last thing Chris Wilkerson wants to do, Dave, is give Lindenwood the ball back here. He would like to make this the last possession of regulation. Yeah, that was really disappointing on that play because Hill was open and O'Brien just let him a little bit too much. Isaiah Hill wide to the right. Niall Hill in the slot to the right. Cooper Willman wide to the left. Second and 10 for Eastern at their 40. O'Brien out of the shotgun. There's the snap. Four-man rush. He's back. Throwing at left sideline. Incomplete. Intended for Willman. Good defense by Bolden again. He was on Willman tight and knocked that pass down with his left hand. Well, now it's third and 10 for Eastern with a minute 17 to go. Panthers just picked up a third and one. They've not had any kind of success at all on these third and longs today. Isaiah Hill is probably their go-to guy. He's wide to the right. Niall Hill's in the slot to the right. Cooper Willman splits out wide left. Third and 10. O'Brien rolling to the right. Sets up. Now throwing deep. Going for Niall Hill. And it's batted down at the, at the 25 of Lindenwood. Bolden again knocked it down. It'll be fourth and 10. And the Panthers will probably have to, have to punt it here. We're on fourth and 10. And you're correct, Mike. A minute 10 is a lot of time left for Kate Brister. Eastern went deep there. Hill actually had a step on the defender, but ball kind of hung in the air a little bit and let Bolden catch up and bat it down. All right, here's Trey Wilhoyt to punt from his 40s where the snap will come. He'll hit it around the 30 on fourth and 10. Spencer Red back to return. Good snap. Kicks away, nice kick. Red driving driving it back to the five. Takes it out of bounds at the one yard line. That one took a perfect bounce. It bounced out just inside the pylon, or I guess it would be outside the pylon. At the one yard line, that's where Lindenwood will take the ball. That is a 59 yard punt by Will Hoyt. So with a minute two to go, Lindenwood gets the ball back but they're 99 yards away from the goal line. Now they don't need a touchdown, but they got a long way to go. It'll be first down from the one. And if Eastern ever needed a punt like that, considering the others today didn't bounce Eastern's way, Eastern certainly was due one and they got it at the most opportune time. All right, minute two to go. First and 10 Lindenwood at their one yard line. They've got a good field goal kicker too. Seibert, remember, seven of eight this year. Actually eight and nine after today. Out of the end zone, Brisker looks to throw it to the left sideline. It is caught at the 15. It'll be a first down. They stop the clock to move the chains. The tight end Lawn Creek made the catch along the left sideline. So Lindenwood out of the hole, first and 10. They move the chains and they'll start the clock with 56 seconds to go. First and 10 Lions at their 14. And now a whistle, and what do we got? Officials are having a conference here. First and 10 for Lindenwood after that 13-yard throw to Lawn Creek. Here's our referee, Garrett Dickerson. Please reset the game clock to 56 seconds. 56 seconds. Going to add five seconds to the clock. That's where it was when the catch was made. And now they should wind the clock, I would think. I guess they say he was out of bounds, so they're not winding the clock. First and 10, Lindenwood at the 14. Brisker back to pass. 
Has good protection. Now it's going to throw it out of bounds on the left sideline, incomplete. Bethany, the intended receiver, but Brister wanted to just get that thing out of bounds. It'll be second and 10, 51 seconds to go. Same thing for Lindenwood that we said about Eastern a bit ago. They do, they want to make this the last possession. They don't want to give Eastern the ball back. Both teams have three timeouts. Second and 10 for the Lions at their 14 yard line. Two receivers each way. Brister in the shotgun has Martin at running back. Brister drops back. Panthers rush three. They chase him out of the pocket. He runs to his right. Brister still looking. Now he's going to throw it deep down the middle of the field. It's intercepted. The Panthers do the penalty flag. The Panthers pick it off at the 40. The flag was thrown where the interception was made. Let's check the flag here. The interception is by Tyrus Harvey of Eastern, but the flag was thrown like it might be interference. It is interference uh, against Eastern. Boy, I'll have to see the replay, but it sure didn't look it. Boy, is that a terrible call. It's a 15 yard penalty and wow. a first down. I'd like to see the replay on this one. Yeah. Tyrus Harvey picked it off, jumped over the, the uh, receiver to pick it off. Here's the replay again. Oh, he pushed. He pushed the, uh, actually, he pushed the man who was not the intended receiver. Yeah, I see what they called. It's a 15-yard penalty. We thought it was intended for Smith, but yeah, Bethany we, was there in the area, too, Bethany. and Harvey pushed him away before he jumped for the ball. So it's a 15-yard penalty. First and 10 with 37 seconds to go from their 29 for Lindenwood. Brister drops back to pass. Short one over the middle, caught by Martin at the 35, tries to head out of bounds and he gets out of bounds. Pushed out by Harvey at the 39. That'll be a first down with 25 seconds to go. So Lindenwood's got this game right where they want it right now with 25 seconds to go. They've got their, they've got a first down at their 39 and they've got all three timeouts. And Eastern needs to keep them from getting to the 35. Or maybe a little closer, they'll need yeah. to be into the wind, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. First and 10, Lindenwood at their 39. High score, back to pass, Brister. Good protection, now rolls left, under pressure. Dodged one, now throws it up the left sideline, out of bounds, incomplete. It was Oyewale again who put the pressure on. Brister dodged him and then just fired it away, incomplete. Stops the clock with 17 seconds to go. Second and 10. I'm guessing Lindenwood needs to get it probably inside the 30 of Eastern to have a good crack at this. Yeah, you're right, Mike. I was wrong on that when I consider that crosswind that, uh, yeah, 51 yarder for them into the wind would not be reasonable. Timeout taken by Lindenwood. We'll hold it here. We owe you a station break. So let's get that in right now with the score tied and 17 seconds to go in regulation. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Panther Sports Network. Lindenwood's kicker, Logan Seibert, is 8 of 9 this year on his field goals. His longest this year has been 44. Longest is in his career, a 50-yard kick. To get a 50-yard kick, they'd have to get to the Eastern 33. But they're into a little bit of a wind. I think, I've got to think that 50 yards is asking too much right now. Lindenwood has it at their 39. There's only 17 seconds to go in regulation. They've got two timeouts left. Eastern's got all three. It's second down, 10 to go. Second and 10 from the 39. Two receivers go left, two go right. Second down and 10. Brister out of the shotgun. Panthers ready to rush three. Brister back to pass. Going to throw it into the middle. Oh, almost intercepted, incomplete. Intended for Rose. And Zay Gentry undercut the route and got his hands on it, but couldn't bring it in. It'll be third down with 13 seconds to go. Boy, Gentry made a good cut in front of the receiver, got hands on the ball, but couldn't catch it. That could have, been a, could have been a pick six if he would have held on to that one. All right, third and 10 for Lindenwood with 13 seconds to go. Have it at their 39. They've got two timeouts. Defense, 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 
Here's Brister back to pass on third down. Three-man rush. Brister has to step up. He's going to run with it. He's going to get the first down at the 50. Slides down at the 44. Down to four seconds to go. Timeout taken by Lindenwood. It'll be a first down as Brister got out of the pocket and gained about 16. First and 10, Lindenwood at the Eastern 44, I think is where the spot. Make it the 45. Time for only one play. And that's got to be too far for a field goal. to be a 62-yard field goal into a little bit of a wind. So I guess Lindenwood needs a Hail Mary right here, right? That's the only option left that I would say. 24 all between Eastern and Lindenwood with four seconds to go in regulation. Tell our radio stations on our network that if we go to overtime, we're going to add in an extra 60-second commercial break at the end of regulation. All right, Panther defense back out on the field. The defenders in the back are going way back. They're going back toward the goal line. Lindenwood, you always look for tall guys here. Loncrete is 6'3", a tight end. Kobe Smith is 6'2", a wide receiver. All right. First down, Lindenwood with four seconds to go with the Panther 45. Back to pass, Brisker gonna throw over the middle, a short one caught, they run a lateral play. They get the ball to Spencer Red, and he's tackled, but there's a penalty flag on the play. Panthers tackled him at the 38. There's a flag on the play. It looks like we're going to overtime. Ineligible player downfield. Offense, number 51. That penalty is declined. That's the end of regulation. We'll go into overtime periods. So we will take a 60-second break at the end of regulation. Team's been close from start to finish, and I guess it's kind of fitting. We go to overtime. It's Eastern Illinois 24. Lindenwood 24. Back with the overtime in just a moment. It's the OVC on ESPN and the Panther Sports Network. Eastern Illinois 24. Lindenwood 24 as the captains head to the center of the field for the coin toss at the start of overtime. Gives us a chance to review the overtime rules. They change from time to time, and they're a little different. They're the same as they were last year. They got changed before last year. Each team will get the ball, get a possession, starting at the opponent's 25. We need to go to subsequent overtime periods. We'll alternate choices. Who gets offense, defense, or choosing into the field? Lyndon Wood, you're the visiting team. This is our head. This is our tails. This is our head. This is our tails. What do you call? You call tails. It is a heads. It, toss and elected to play defense. Which end of the field would you like to play? Going towards the scoreboard? Very good. Let's shake hands. Okay, so Eastern won the toss, elected to play defense. So Lindenwood will get the ball first, operating with the wind at their back and will play the first overtime at the north end of the field. Both teams will have the wind at their back. It'll be first and 10 at the 25. Each team will get that. And if there's a difference after those two possessions in the score, the game's over. If we go to a second overtime, it's the same thing, except you cannot kick a one-point conversion at the end of the second overtime. You've got to go for two. If we're still tied and go to a third overtime, it's nothing but two-point conversion plays, one by each team until we have a winner. Total yards, 451 for Lindenwood and 275 for Eastern. Lindenwood's got 33 first downs, only 13 by Eastern. Panthers, though, have got five takeaways in this game and Lindenwood's got one. All right, Lindenwood gets the ball first at the 25 of Eastern. First down, 10 to go in the first overtime. Operating right to left, that's south to north. They fake a handoff, Brister on a run to his right. Gets outside at the 20 and runs out of bounds at the 15 for a first down. Good play to start the overtime, a 10 yard run for Brister. First down, 10 to go Lindenwood at the Eastern 15 yard line. Both teams have good field goal kickers. Those come in very handy in overtime. A lot of times a kick will decide the game one way or another, but not once you get to the second overtime. 
or past the second. They're completely out of it. First and 10 at the 15. Here's Brister out of the gun. He will hand it off to Williams into the middle. Spurts through hold at the 10. Got down to the 5. I think he's got another first down, a gain of 10. Boy, Dave, the Panther defense has been on the field a lot late in the game. Remember, they scored their last touchdown. The defense scored, so they had to go right back out there. Yeah, Lindenwood ran 85 plays in regulation. 85. First and goal at the 5 for Lindenwood in the first overtime. Handoff Williams up the middle, met at the 2. And push back, Nick Coates on the tackle. It'll be second and goal coming up. Spot the ball at the two-yard line. Second down, goal to go Lindenwood. Tie score in the first overtime period. Lindenwood with the first possession of the overtime. Has it at the two. Second down, goal to go. Rose to the right, Smith to the left with Bethany. Williams at running back, out of the hot shotgun. Brister drops back, guns a back shoulder throw to the right, touchdown. Peyton Rose with the catch and a touchdown for Lindenwood. Just great timing on that play. Harvey had the coverage, he was in good position, but uh, ball got there before he could look for it. And it's a two yard touchdown pass for Brister, his second of the game. Lindenwood takes a 30 to 24 lead in the first overtime. Extra point attempt now for Cyber, trying to push the lead up to seven. So the pressure will be on the Panther offense to score a touchdown. There's the snap, low snap, kick is up, and the kick is good. We'll hold it here. It's now, oh, hold on, there's a penalty flag on the extra point. Flag was thrown by the linesman on the far side. It's against Eastern, it appears. Offside, Offside. Defense. defense, number seven. Number seven. That penalty that is declined. declined. The try is good. So, touchdown Lindenwood. Throws the two yard pass. And Lindenwood's got the lead, 31-24. And now Eastern's got the ball. First and 10 at the Lindenwood 25. All right, Panther offense needs a touchdown and a kick to tie the game. Touchdown and a two-point conversion to win it. O'Brien, the quarterback for Eastern. First and 10 at the 25 of Lindenwood. O'Brien back and a throw it up the left sideline. Hills got it at the five, powers to the corner, out of bounds at the one. Back shoulder throw to Isaiah Hill who made a catch and tried to get inside. The goal line, but got stopped at the one. It'll be first down, goal to go, Panthers. Eastern already lined up, ready to snap it on first and goal from the one. O'Brien's up under the center. Quarterback sneak, they push the pile, and it's a touchdown for Eastern Illinois, I think. Sure looks like he's in, no signal yet. Oh, there it is, touchdown. O'Brien with his second touchdown of the game on a quarterback sneak. And now, what does Chris Wilkerson want to do? Looks like he sends out the kicking team to try to tie the game. And a player shaking up in the middle for Eastern. Here's O'Brien again. Watch the push from behind. This Manaves is the pusher. That used to not be legal, but now it is. Injured players, Max Steinman in the offensive line for Eastern. He's up, walking off in some pain. All right, Panthers need the extra point from Stone Galloway to send the game to the second overtime. 31-30, the score right now. Lindenwood's got the lead. If Galloway makes the extra point, Panther offense will be right back out there to start the second overtime. All right, all important extra point for Galloway. Good snap, place down, kicks up. It's good. So we're tied up and we play on. We'll hold it here. 31 all tie. And we're going to a second overtime. Lindenwood will get the ball first. I'm sorry, Eastern will get the ball first. At the 25. 
and now if you make a touchdown, you cannot go for one. You've got to go for a two-point conversion. I tell you, the homecoming fans that have stuck around, these diehards are certainly get their money's worth. This has been one great game from start to finish. 31 all tie as we go to overtime number two. Both offenses made really quick work of that uh, overtime. I suppose the decision to kick it was the correct one, but I, boy, I'd had to think a little bit about going to two, not to, so we didn't give Prister another chance. And Lindenwood doesn't do it by himself, I know. All right, first and 10 Eastern. O'Brien still the quarterback at the 25 of Lindenwood. O'Brien takes the snap, handoff to Pierre, angles left, hit near the line, got to about the 23. Picked up about two. It'll be second and eight coming up. No clock except a play clock in the overtime. We're going the same direction from south to north. Max Steinman, the offensive lineman who was hurt on the touchdown, he's back in the game at left guard. Second and eight at the 23 for Eastern. Panthers send Willman wide to the right with Niall Hill. Isaiah Hill splits out to the left. Second and eight, O'Brien, handoff, Pierre. No, it's a pass into the middle. He complete, Hill got knocked down. No flag. Intended for Niall Hill at the 10, got tangled up with the defense and went down. Maybe, maybe tangled feet. No penalty, I don't see a penalty flag on the play. It's third down coming up. Let's see if we got a replay on that one. If you're just tangled feet, they typically don't throw the flag. It's going to be third and eight coming up. Hill splits out to the left. Thistles are very late getting the ball marked here. There's only now they reset the play clock. Okay, there's only about 14 on the play clock because they got the ball marked. Third and eight at the 23 for the Panthers. Need a big play here. O'Brien back to pass, sets up, hit as he throws, hits to the man on the right flat at the 15. This is Darius Smith to the 12. It's going to be a first down. O'Brien was hit just as he let it go, but he found Darius Smith in the right flat. Check it, Niall Hill in the right flat, and he made a good move after the catch to pick up 10, and it's first and 10, Eastern Illinois. Ball to the 12 of Lindenwood, first down Panthers. Isaiah Hill splits out to the right. Niall Hill goes left with Cooper Willman. We're in the second overtime. We're tied at 31. Eastern Illinois has got the ball. It's the top half of the overtime. First and 10 at the 12 yard line. O'Brien back, they blitz. Back corner throw, knocked down and almost intercepted. Back shoulder throw at the corner of the end zone intended for Niall Hill. And the defender ended up in actually better position to catch it. It was Wesley Hines on the coverage. And Hill had to turn into a defensive player there to break up that pass. Second and 10 coming up. Jonah O'Brien now, 13 of 20 passing, 149 yards and a touchdown. Second and 10 EIU, ball at the 12 yard line of Lindenwood. Three receivers go to the left, tight end on the right. O'Brien drops back, sets up. Now steps up in the pocket. He's going to run across the 10, gets to the 7. Kind of got tripped up as he left the pocket, but kept his balance and got about a 5-yard gain. Put the ball at the 8, and it's going to be 3rd down, 6 to go for Eastern. Huge play here with the game tied in the second overtime. Darius Smith wide to the right. Cooper Willman wide left. Also Manavez, Niall Hill to the left. Third and six at the eight. O'Brien back to pass. They blitz. He throws in the right flat. Caught at the five, but short of the first down. And the player I think is injured over there, Niall Hill. Good tackle by Lloyd Lockett to allow no yards after the catch for Hill at the five yard line. Niall Hill only gained a couple. It's going to be fourth down and three to go. Panthers could take the lead with a field goal, but they're thinking, boy, that's not going to, that's not very good against Lindenwood. Looks like Eastern's going to go for it here. 
Niall Hill is shaken up. He started to come off, and now he's back down on the field holding his shoulder. And so we've got an injury timeout for him. It's going to be fourth down and about three to go, Dave, at the five-yard line. You know, my sense says that you better try to throw it to Isaiah Hill. Well, he, yeah, he wasn't in the game on the last play. No. Surely they'll get him back in there. Unless he's not healthy. He's been in and out. He hasn't been in the game a lot in the second half coming off that knee injury. Yeah. Niall Hill is up and walking, not jogging off now, pretty much under his own power. Panthers sure looking like they're going to go for it here on fourth down, three to go at the five yard line. That's really tough yardage to try to pick up running down there. I just don't have a lot of confidence based on what they've done today. They're going to go for it. Nope, field goal team is coming out. It's the field goal team on the field for Eastern. Kick will come from the right hash mark for Stone Galloway. It's going to be a 22 yard try. Trying to put Eastern ahead in the second overtime. Galloway made a 31 yarder earlier today. Has a wind at his back on this one from 22 at the right hash mark. There's the snap, placed down, kick is up, and the kick is good. So Galloway stays perfect on the year. He's eight for eight. That is his 21st field goal of his career. He's now tied with Zach Yates for number eight in EIU history for field goals made. So the Panthers have the lead, 34-31, but now it's Lindenwood's turn in overtime. A touchdown wins the game for them. They need a field goal to tie it. And you're pretty much starting at the 25. You're pretty much in field goal range if you don't lose any yards. Well, Panther defense has had four takeaways today. I'm just going to say we need, a, we need a turnover. Need a fifth. Brister on first down, handoff to Williams up the middle, hit and stopped at the 19, I think. Spot him on the 20 for a gain of five. Lindenwood may not even throw the ball. They may try to just keep it on the ground. Ball at the 20 for a gain of five. It'll be second down and five for Lindenwood. They're down 34-31 in the second overtime, but all they need is a touchdown to win it. Here's Brister on second and five. Williams at running back to his right. Crowd making a lot of noise now. Three receivers go to the left. Here's Brister back to pass. Looking and throwing to the left. It's caught at the 15. Hard hit. And let's see what forward progress they give him. Kobe Smith on the catch. Nick Coach with the tackle. Just enough for the first down. Ball caught at the 15 for a gain of five. It's first and 10 for Lindenwood. Got just enough. So here are the Lions now, first and 10 at the Eastern 15 yard line. Need a touchdown to win the game in the second overtime. Kobe Smith wide to the left, Rose wide to the right. Bethany in the slot to the right. Veteran quarterback Brister rolls out to his left, sets up, throwing to the corner, out of bounds, incomplete. Intended for Smith, he was out of bounds. And uh, Brister just gunned it his way to get rid of it. It's incomplete. Second and 10. Brister now, 26 out of 40 passing, 287 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Smith goes to the right with Bethany. Wide to the left is Rose on second and 10 at the 15. Brister earned. They blow the play dead. Eastern took a timeout. We'll hold it here. I'm out of this overtime period. Panthers took the timeout to make sure they were set on defense. All right, in the first overtime, both teams got a touchdown. Rose caught a touchdown pass for Lindenwood. O'Brien scored on a quarterback sneak for Eastern. 
in the second overtime. Panthers got stopped at the three, and Stone Galloway kicked a 22-yard field goal. That's giving, giving Eastern the lead, 34-31. But that left the door open for Lindenwood. If they can get a touchdown, they can get a walk-off win. Their offense has moved the ball all day. They've got 486 total yards in this game, averaging 5.3 yards per play. Dave has talked about they've run 91 plays to Eastern's 57, so the Panther defense has been on the field a bunch. All right, second and 10 for Lindenwood at the 15 of Eastern. Two receivers to the right, Kobe Smith to the left. Crowd making noise again. Justin Williams at running back. Here's Brister. He's going to move Smith in motion. Brister back. Short one over the middle. Caught by Smith. He's at the 10. He spins. He's tackled right there at the 9. Gain a 6. Nick Coates again on the tackle. It'll be third down and four coming up. Ball's at the 9-yard line of Eastern. Third down and four for Lindenwood. If they don't make the first down, they may have to take the field goal. Here's Brister. He's got Rose to the right. He's got Bethany and Smith to the left. Longcrete, the tight end, in the slot to the left. Third and four at the nine. The line to gain the 15, the five rather. Brister drops back. Panthers rush four. Brister, a lot of time. Loops it into the end zone. Touchdown, Lindenwood wins. Kobe Smith in the back of the end zone. Caught the game-winning touchdown pass. And Lindenwood, the second overtime, wins it. 37-34. Well, is there a penalty flag? Hold on, I don't see one. Officials, officials are conferencing. Hold on. Here comes the announcement. Prior to the flag, the game over. Okay, so the flag came after the game ended. So Lindenwood wins it, 37-34. Great game here, Dave, but. Um, Never, never did feel like that we had control. I really give a lot of credit to Lyndon Wood. They put together a nice program that's made a lot of advancement in a shorter period of time here at this level, really at Division II also. That last play, Brister had just a lot of time. It, it, when he had time, he made good plays all day long. Panthers. When they had success against him, it's because they put good pressure on him. Yeah. Well, that's going to wrap things up on our coverage on ESPN+. Plus. Stay tuned. More post-game coverage on the radio on the Panther Sports Network and at EIUPanthers.com. For Dave Kidwell, this is Mike Brad from O'Brien Field in Charleston. Final score today was in double overtime, Lindenwood 37 and Eastern Illinois 34. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.